Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my channel if you're new and a big warm hello to my subscribers. I love you guys. Today I've put together a very fun compilation of my favorite Christmas DIYs. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. For this craft, I used the Rust-Oleum 2 times Ultra Cover Paint in White Gloss. That was really good. It, I did it in one coat. This is an everyday Dollar Tree plastic tray. It's available at my Dollar Tree all year round. I hope you guys can find it. If not, any plastic tray will work. And that is a free printable that I made and it's available down below my video in the description box. You just click the link and it will take you right to it. If you're on a PC, click the words that say show more. If you're on a cell phone or a iPad or a you know tablet type thing, there will be a little gray arrow in the upper right hand corner. Just tap that and the drop down menu will appear. And that's where you'll find a lot of information and my free printables as well. So here I'm creasing it. I originally started with my fingers. I knew it wasn't going to be deep enough. So that end of the sponge brush there, the wood part, because it was round, it didn't have any sharp edges, worked really well. I got a really deep, nice line without any damage to the paper. So I was able to cut a perfect fit. And I'm really excited about this craft, you guys, because when I poured the Mod Podge on, and it dried, you literally cannot see the seam of the paper unless you're looking for it. You know, if you know that it's Mod Podge on there or you have a magnifying glass, but it was amazing how, that's one thing I love about Mod Podge because it has plastic in it, it is really thick. So for whatever reason with this craft, it just disguised the fact that it was paper really, really well. You couldn't see the seams at all. And so that was a pleasant surprise. You'll see it at the end, but it looks really, really good. Now I want to share a little trick here about how to prevent your ink from running when you use Mod Podge. Somebody asked me about that last time. I've never had a problem with it, but I switched out to a cheaper ink. It's not the brand name that comes with my printer. And this time the North Pole ran a little bit, but it was a happy mistake as Bob Ross would say, because it actually flared out like pink shards and made it look really magical and kind of like Candyland, like the North Pole. So it was all good. You know, it looked like the cookie sprinkles. So it went perfect. I couldn't have done it any better than that if I had tried with a printer, but you just missed your project, whatever it is with a little bit of poly acrylic spray, let it dry. And then you're good to go to put your Mod Podge on. I'm using a piece of scrap wood that I had in the garage and I cut it at a 45 degree angle. But here's the window box from the Dollar Tree and I was going to use this and use the back of it for the barn. You could also use the front of it if you want a window type barn scene. That might be kind of cute. You, they, they have so many house shapes now where I am. I, I hope that's going on, on in, in all of the Dollar Trees. But if you don't have that, you can also take the Dollar Tree signs and cut them into the shape of a house and then use the scraps that are cut off to make sides. You, you know, there, when there's a will, there's a way. So this craft is so much fun and these are totally on trend. So I'm cutting these craft sticks to make my roof. I want my roof to be jagged. So I deliberately broke one end and cut the other end because, you know, I want it to look more rustic. And there's a little trick with the craft stick that I wanted to share. When you're cutting it up the center to get a thinner stick, because I didn't have any thinner sticks and I didn't want to go to the store, cut halfway up and turn it around and cut the other halfway up. That way it won't split on you. So that's a nice tip. And here I'm just applying my roof with some hot glue and some wood glue. If you're, you know, you don't have to do this. This is optional. It's just, I like it really rustic. And so that was a little too neat and clean for me. See the ends right there when I move my thumb, they're just kind of jagged. For me, that was more like a old barn 
barn <laughs> an old abandoned barn and I'm actually keeping this up all year round so I kind of you know wavered back and forth deciding whether I wanted to write Merry Christmas on it or not and I finally said no this is too cute this is going to be on my farmhouse console table all year round I just think it's adorable <laughs> So I opt for this color red. I think it's called like a fire truck red. <laughs> I went for a really bright one. You guys don't have to, or I could have used a burgundy red, but I decided to make it pop. And I deliberately paint it in a way where some of the wood is left behind showing it. Now on one side of this barn here, or this wood, there was already white paint. My son gave me this from a bed frame that he built that he took apart and he, he said, oh mom, you know, I know you use wood. Do you want it? I'm like, hey, yes. <laughs> you bet I do. So it worked out really, really well because there was already white under there. So if you like the look you see that I'm getting right here, you would need to paint a light bit of white underneath. And I'm using my favorite color, black, to distress it, just adding some, you know, dirt here and there to make it look old and weathered. And I pour a little bit of water inside the black paint to make a nice black stain for the roof because I, I don't look at that. I mean, I knew it would do that. It just kind of came up with some brown tones in there too. I love the way that came out. So I'm just adding some of that black paint that's watered down underneath the roof where it would naturally get dirty and accumulate there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint the sticks that I cut a nice bright snow white. I'm painting it with my homemade chalk paint. If you wanna know how to make that, there is the video link down below in my description box as well. It's very cheap. I still have a lot left, so I haven't been really motivated to make the new video. I have ordered all the ingredients. You guys, I could have wrote a book at how difficult that was regarding the supplies from the supplier that I wanted it from. But anyway, it is slowly all coming together. I'm actually thinking about adding another ingredient that might work. And so that would mean I'd have to order another one. because I want to give you guys lots of options. And I also want to show you what doesn't work, but we're working on it. So here you see me laying down the stick. I'm cutting it at an angle. I recommend you do that before you paint it. You get cleaner seams that way because when you paint it, the paint fills it in kind of like a wood filler wood or a spackling so you don't have to do that step and it looks nice and clean. Here's the Dollar Tree Pine. I've complained about it being cheap looking before. The way I make it look more expensive is I usually trim it down a little bit. I took that piece out and flocked it earlier that week with a bit of spray paint outside. It came out great. And now I'm just using this round little jar to make a perfect circle. That's a nice little tip there. You, you know, probably most of you guys know that, but just in case. And I decide because I do want to keep this up all year round that I don't really want to go with all pine. So I take some of that Walmart floral and I just wire it on there to, you know, it'll still pass for Christmas, but then I can keep it up all year. And here's the Dollar Tree Buffalo Check Ribbon. I'm just floating some fire over it there. It stops the edges from fraying and seals them up really nicely so they stay nice and clean for you. And there's what we end up with, you guys. And I love this barn so much. It's perfect for Christmas, and I cannot wait to keep it up all year round. Here is the online inspiration piece. They are oversized farmhouse Christmas trees. I think they are so cute. So I'm spraying some metallic silver spray on black poster board and blotting it off with a paper towel. And I'm showing you both black and white poster board because I tried both to see what look I would get to see which one I liked better. I ended up going with the black one because I thought it looked more like aged metal even maybe galvanized metal. It's probably a stretch for galvanized because it doesn't have the little amoeba shapes, but we're getting there. I mean, it was pretty, you know, it's a fast way to get the aged metal look and that's good enough for what I'm doing. And now I'm just taking the foam tree from the Dollar Tree. That comes in a set. I think it's six, it might be eight, but I'm using it as a pattern. You could just hold a piece of paper up to your computer screen and get a pattern of the Christmas tree online. You don't have to print anything up. You don't have to have that foam Christmas tree. I'm just using it for, you know, a, a little template so that I can cut out my metal tree. 
Now the one thing I will say that I learned doing this is I would suggest that you fold your poster board first and then cut it out. You know, trace your shape and cut it out because once you cut out your shape and you try to fold it, you have all these little fragile edges that want to tear and they almost did. I was very stressed. Luckily we got through it, but it made it a lot harder than it needed to be. So here I am, I'm just giving it a light coat of the white chalk paint. That is my homemade chalk paint again. And I'm using the color Country Tan by Apple Barrel Paint to paint a little bit of dry brushing on there and you know, give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of a more rustic look. Here's some Dollar Tree Pine. I'm just trimming down a little bit to make it fit more with this craft. It does make it look more expensive, if, but you know, if you want a bigger pine, then of course that kind of sabotages that. So another way to get this pine to look more expensive is you can just flock it with some white spray paint or some green spray paint if it's a better color and you actually get a really neat pine look where it's like it has dimension because it's different shades of green. I've done all kinds of things to dress this pine up you guys and it's great for crafts. I actually love it. So now I'm just using some of the Walmart twine because I wanted it a little bit thicker because this tree is you know kind of big and heavier looking than the ornaments were and I'm topping it with a Dollar Tree little sticker snowflake that comes in a set and the little Dollar Tree pine cones on the top. I just think this came out so cute. I do have the mini bells from the Dollar Tree and I was debating whether I should do those, but I couldn't find them. So I ended up going with the pine cones, which I think came out totally rustic cute. And now I'm just gluing a little bit of spare wood on the back that I had to help it stand up straight on its own. And I end up taking the color nutmeg and going around the edges of this tree just to add a little bit more dimension, kind of like a faux rust, because I liked that. You don't have to do that. It looks really nice without it. You know, it's optional, but I just end up wanting to make it look a little bit older. I, I, you'll see me put a little bit of rust on the center of the tree as well and smearing it with my finger. For this craft, you're going to need one of those flying disc frisbees from the Dollar Tree and some of the little table tennis ping pong balls. I call them ping pong balls. I don't know why they call them table tennis, but I'm showing you that even though I painted this with the same Rust-Oleum white paint and primer, it was really resistant as far as sticking. It was chipping off really easily, so I did end up having to touch it up and it was no big deal because for what I'm making this for, it's going to be covered but I just wanted to let you know that you may want to maybe sand at the Frisbee a little bit if you want to put things that will bang it around or put a coat of Mod Podge or a polyacrylic spray, just something to protect it a little bit more. I didn't bother because I didn't need to. And now I'm taking the color in, I believe that is, is khaki. And I'm just taking it and dry brushing it all over and smearing it on. This craft, 
ended up coming up so so cute so the first layer I do is the khaki and then I turn to my favorite burnt umber you can see it's already ready to go in the bowl there and I'm going to do some more dry brushing with the burnt umber but as I dry brush I'm going to use a tissue and wipe and smear as I go and I end up getting just a beautiful effect watch as I keep going Doesn't that look pretty? It's too bad those four little circles are there. I mean, I'm gonna fill it up and I knew that right when I bought it, so I didn't care. I'm after those designs right there. They are absolutely beautiful when I dry brush them. They look like, like a little wooden bowl. I mean, they look so cute, those lines. And I know I'm gonna be covering up the inside, so I wasn't too worried about it, but I just thought that paint came up so, so pretty. Now, if you wanna know how I made the faux birch wood right there, there's a separate video for that, and I will link it below in my description box as well as at the end of this video just click on it and there's a tutorial how to make that faux birch wood it looks really amazing but check out how good that dollar tree garland looks when it's flocked with spray paint you guys it is a super quick easy way to dress it up you can also use a paintbrush and just kind of tap the paint on but it looks really nice flocked I'm just filling this up with all natural little florals from the Dollar Tree and the little wood sticks. I'm a big fan of Christmas stuff that brings like the forest inside nature because you can't beat that. I mean, in the old days, they didn't have plastic florals. They decorated by bringing the outdoors in. And I just still think that is such a beautiful, beautiful, fresh, crisp, yuletide look. Anyway, here it is, you guys. I love this craft. For this first craft, I'm using the farmer's market calendar and some foam board. So you can use any image you want. You can print it up from online. You can use another calendar image. And this is a piece of round foam that my sister pulled out of her trunk of her car and asked me, can you do anything with this for your channel? I went, yeah, I'm going, yeah, sure. <laughs> Give it to me. So today we're doing something with that round foam. But if you don't have foam, just cut about three rounds of whatever size you want in cardboard. You just want this to be thick and sturdy. And when you glue your foam board down to it prevents it from curling if it's got a nice brace in the back. So you can see here that I went ahead and I traced my circle using the foam board and now I'm cutting them in little separate little panels but I am cutting out little sections in between so don't forget that little groove you need those in between each one of the panels there and you guys can probably guess what I'm going to do here this is a palette sign I love palette signs you guys for farmhouse decor I think they are so cute and of course I'm going to go with December's calendar page which is that little Christmas tree farm cutout out and I'm going to go ahead and take that now and lay it on top of my loose pieces they're not matted down or glued on anything just yet and I'm going to approximately draw a line where the grooves are going to be because each one of those little sections of the calendar page are going to be glued down on each panel
Next, I'm taking those pieces and I'm going to glue them down onto the foam board. And remember, if you don't have the foam, you're just, you know, you've taken and made a big circle out of preferably at least three pieces of cardboard there to make that nice firm brace in the back so you don't have to worry about any curling issues. And of course, you guys, I tried a hot glue gun at first and it melted the styrofoam. I kind of knew it would, but I was hoping against all odds. So I'm going with regular old school glue here and to glue it down. And it's remarkable, actually, by the time I'm done gluing this down, it dries good enough for me to move on to the next step. So now I'm using some joint compound. Now a bunch of people came on my videos and said that polyphylla is also in Australia, it's in Canada, Belgium. I actually lost track of all the countries. So if you if that if you recognize that name, yours is polyphylla. Now polyphylla is equivalent to our spackling. Spackling is a little thicker than joint compound. I believe they put oil in joint compound, so it takes a little longer to dry. But the goal here is to brush it on so you're getting those little streaks because that's what's going to imitate the wood grain. If you are working with spackling or polyphylla, go ahead and add a little bit of water just to make it more workable so that it's not so thick and you have time to spread it and work with it and you know it goes it goes a little farther you wait for that to dry or you can blow dry it with a blow dryer I blow dried mine I think it took maybe seven minutes and the whole thing was bone dry and then you, I'm cutting out that image the calendar page and of course I love to tear the edges because I think when you're all done it kind of helps it blend and disappear into the surface a little bit better than if you just leave it square and glue it on. You've got that real harsh edge that's hard to hide. You can burn it with a lighter. Someone suggested that, but I have done that before and it torched and I took too much off and I took some of the actual print that I wanted to preserve. So you could try it, just get ready to blow really hard. Now I'm taking some of the pewter gray from apple barrel paint and i'm just dry brushing it on really softly because that also is going to help it blend in and kind of mute it you can see it it looks beautiful and it just becomes part of that image and this is actually so pretty in real life i really hope the camera does it justice and i'm taking the dollar tree little jute twine it's not the brown one this is one i love for christmas or any kind of nautical ocean type decor it's perfect for that and because I managed to glue this image down without any wrinkles lumps or bumps I did not want to risk putting Mod Podge on it in case that happened because sometimes Mod Podge does cause that so I opted to do two coats of a clear varnish spray in matte and I am so sorry, I lost the footage where I take a little bit of burnt umber paint. It's just a dark brown paint and I paint inside the grooves there to make sure that they pop, but you will see it at the end when it comes up. But I think this craft came out so good. It looks so real in real life. It looks just like wood. For this next DIY, you're going to need one of these little flower, they call them a funeral cup, I think, and these cake pans. But I have seen those cups, those little flower cups used for weddings as well. So you just stab them in the ground and they hold flowers. And you're going to take that little pokey stab thing and just cut it off. It came off super, super easy, as you could see. And then I'm just sanding it here a little bit, not with super rough sandpaper. And again, it sands down real easy just to make the surface flat. And we're gonna be making a two-tiered Christmas tray. I just thought this center, when I saw it, I knew immediately that this would make such a cute faux wood center for a tiered tray. So that's what we're doing. And both these things, I believe, are everyday Dollar Tree items. Pretty much, I think, at every Dollar Tree, I hope. I mean, I shouldn't say every because there's probably one hole-in-the-wall Dollar Tree that doesn't have this. But <laughs> I go to like six different Dollar Trees within my vicinity in either direction, and they all have these. And anyways, I'm just taking some really strong 
super glue adhesive gel type glue and gluing it down because I want this to stay. What I'm doing here is I've just been making sure that it's got a nice smooth surface and it's dry enough to take it out and spray paint it. Now after I spray painted it, I just didn't like it. It looked too much like a factory application. It was too smooth. I needed those lines in there because I want this to look like it's got a little bit of wood grain. So I go ahead and give it a second coat of the Kills Primer, K-I-L-Z. And now I'm going to use some red and do some candy cane little stripes in the center here. So this tray would be perfect, of course, for anywhere in the home, but it would make a super excellent hot cocoa tier tray to hold all your little goodies. When I had kids, I used to do the hot cocoa bar. My husband and I are kind of just sticking with coffee because we're trying to avoid the heavy sugar. We're trying to be healthier, you guys, and that was a tough mountain to climb. So <laughs> if I start eating sugar again, I'm gonna be like swimming in it. So I'm just taking a little bit of the red paint there. You saw what I did. I made the edge look like faux enamel. And now I'm going to dry brush some white paint over the center so it looks more distressed, you know, more like wood. And this is going to be on my kitchen counter. It's next to the canister that I made that I also did the red enamel on. And it said Christmas tree farm because they're very complimentary to each other. They're going to look so cute. They're sitting on top of a wooden breadboard. And I'm going to put my three ingredients in a pretty container at the bottom and then put holiday decor on the top. And I love the way this came out so much. I saw these three vases online about a month ago and I fell in love. In fact, they're sold out. When I looked for the picture, I noticed it said sold out. I think they were originally from Walmart, but I've had these pink vases for a while now, since Valentine's Day, I think. And I finally figured out what I was going to do with them. I took them outside, gave them some spray paint, and it was in a gloss. And I didn't realize that when I was spray painting it and I didn't like that. So I went ahead and took my matte it's the Kills primer again and painted a coat of it over just to make it look nice and you know matte you know you don't want it I didn't want it shiny maybe you guys do but I didn't because I think that was part of the peaceful look in that photo there was that they were really matte and here is some little wreaths that I tried to copy the look of those are going to be free printables down below my video in the description box if you click that link it will take you to them and now I'm just using pencil. Now I opted not to use a carbon paper because sometimes when you're pressing, it can leave some ink and stain behind in places you don't want it to go to. So you could see I was staying very carefully on the design with the pencil to make sure well, I was trying to avoid that. And I knew that by the time I traced all those little leaves, yes, I did. I could have, I guess, Mod Podged that image on, but I really wanted it to look like it was painted on. I think that looks you know, up close anyway, a little bit better with this kind of craft because it has that bend. It shows the edges of the paper a little more than a tray would or, or like a piece of wood if you were making a photo. 
Anyway, it was fun, very relaxing, and I ended up opting to use colored pencils because I wanted that soft. I knew I couldn't get it exactly like that photo because that's like a factory print, but the closest I could think of was the colored pencils. I've spoken about this before. I use Prism, and the link below to the ones I use is again in my description box if you want to check it out and see you know the ones I use but they're like almost oily and they imitate ink really really well and so I just took my time and here's what we end up with and I think this came up so so cute so the next step was to get that top decor on <laughs> After I do the pencil, I do take them outside in the backyard and do two coats of a clear varnish on, and I just let them dry while I was having my chocolate mint coffee. <laughs> but anyway, I bring them back in and I look at the photo and I notice it does have a piece of twine tied around the top there. So I wanted to create a surface that would be better for gluing all these heavy things on, the pine cones and berries. So I ended up tying a bow double tying it and then triple tying it and then cutting all of the loops off so I just had a spray of this twine and then this is what I glue the pine cones and the berries to and the little faux pine there and it worked perfectly. <laughs> For this craft, you're going to need those cookie sheets from the Dollar Tree, two of them, and a printout of a reindeer. Now, here's what I did. I opened it with paint, the image. You're going to see me do that. And I was recording it, you guys, and then I realized the program in my computer wasn't recording the drop-down menus, which is critical for you to see. So I actually had to take my camera out and film it. So sorry about that, but it's better than nothing. You go to print, page setup, and then you get this. And you're going to change it to portrait. And then you're going to go down to the part that says scaling and make it a two by two. And also at the top there where you see it says margins, you can change that down to zero, zero, and that'll get his little feet in there as well. After you click OK, you'll end up back on this page. That's OK. Just go back to print. And then this time hit print preview. And there you have your two reindeer that will print up on two sheets. Now you can play with that if you want you guys and you can make them huge or small. You can do as many pages as you want. You can make a huge reindeer, but we're just going with this size. So he fits on my little cookie sheets. And the first thing I do is I cut him out. I'm going to go ahead and check to make sure he fits. And then I'm going to cut the edges off of the two pans. I am working with the two pans here, not one. You'll need two for this craft. They come in a set of two from the Dollar Tree. And in England, maybe you guys call them aluminium cookie sheets. I'm not sure. But what my little trick is I do is as I'm cutting, I bend it away right when my hand gets near it so I don't get cut. So make sure you're really careful. Go slow. Take your time. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take some masking tape or any kind of tape that you have that's thick like this and you're going to tape up the edges to hold the two pans in place. After you do this you will be putting down the image of the reindeer and you will be taping him down really good as well. And now you're going to see me put on some fuzzy gloves. These are just gloves from the 99 cent only store. They're not any special kind of high utility gloves and they worked fine. Anytime the edges hit them, it didn't go through. So that's all you need. But we do kind of go around some rough bends here where you can't bend things back without damaging your craft. So you're going to want to wear something on your hands so that you don't get cut. And I'm just going to go ahead now and cut the reindeer out.
once you get to that point and you're done just straighten him out a little bit there that was all I was doing was this little antlers needed a little bit of straightening but this is what you end up with and of course carefully remove any remnant tape that you have left stuck on the edges there I use these little tweezers they're great for crafting if you have another little sharp tool but just be very very gentle because at this point the foil is really prone to tearing accidentally because we haven't sturdied it up yet so go slow and be careful the next thing you're going to do is look for any little tiny pieces of metal like that one right there that's left on the edge this attention to detail really makes a difference you guys for making crafts look high-end and store-bought if you or it doesn't you know I love homemade looking stuff but sometimes homemade looking stuff you find at the stores and they're made to look homemade I don't know if that makes sense but you still want to pay attention to that detail because it does kind of create you know a better final result the next thing you're going to do is use the smallest craft sticks they sell at the Dollar Tree and some of their skewers for gluing on the inside of this reindeer so this is going to be on the inside body what you see right now and I'm creating weight and I'm creating a brace so that the pan isn't bendy anymore and flimsy it's going to be really super tough unbendable and thick looking when we're done Now comes the gluing down part. Now you want to start with the antlers and do not a generous amount of hot glue, but enough to cover the wood and you're going to be pressing it down. Now the metal does conduct heat. So I am kind of burning my fingers here, but when I'm into my craft, I don't care. If that's an issue for you, feel free to use that little silicone spatula that I use that I found at the Dollar Tree. That's a great tool for pressing it down or you could press it with a cloth or your, you know the edge of your shirt. But be careful because it does get hot and you're just going to go ahead and glue the whole thing down. Now you can see here where there's those open seams at the top near the antlers. The rest of the seams I was able to pinch closed but at the top because those are round at the skewers I put a little hot glue to fill in those seams and it worked perfectly. So just do that and this is what you end up with. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my pewter gray from Apple Barrel and sponge some on here to kind of tone it down and make it look more like an aged metal piece. And that's what we have when we're done with that. And of course, you guys, I'm going to use my favorite color for rusting, the Nutmeg by Apple Barrel. And I'm going to go ahead and rust this little guy all around the edges and also give him a nice little frame. I think that looks, you know, the border, I just think that makes him pop more and it looks really, really good. So you don't have to do this if you don't want to this part, but I just thought it looks really, really good. Next comes the embellishment part and you're going to see what I use just some pine pine cones berries burlap it comes up really beautiful the combination I do use a dowel to hold this little guy up and where I messed up is I should have put the dowel in as part of what filled his body up before I glued the other side down I still you know did it as you can see it works just fine I save the day but obviously that wasn't good so <laughs> make sure you do that ahead of time and I'm using a terracotta pot from the Dollar Tree, a pool noodle for the foam and decorating it and that's it. For this craft, you're going to need a Dollar Tree wooden ornament, a wooden shim, or a paint stick or one of the Dollar Tree rulers, that would work too. I'm giving mine a light sand because they tend to be a little rough if you use a shim. 
and I'm just applying it with some wood glue. Now wood glue is still the best glue for raw wood and I'm securing it with some hot glue on the side so I get an instant bond so I can continue with my craft. Super glue is the second choice for wood if you don't have wood glue. Don't bother with E6000, that doesn't work. And there's some other glues that work too, but I think the number, you know, as far as number one, number two ranking for raw wood is wood glue and then a super glue type gel, like that kind of glue. And I'm just giving it one coat of the white primer by Kills. I'm using that up because it's gonna dry out and I've got a lot of it. And I'm using some Peter Gray from Apple Barrel Paint just to distress the outer edges. Now today we're going to be trying a different way to transfer font. I've seen this on some YouTube videos and I've been wanting to try it for years. I took some wax paper there, I cut it the same size, or as close as I could, to the computer paper and I'm just taping it on with regular masking tape because that will be easy to remove. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim it on the outer edges here. So. The reason I'm doing this is I usually use carbon paper or I scribble pencil on the back, but because I distressed with the pewter gray, it's going to be harder for me to see that. You can also just hold your paper up to the computer screen and trace right off the computer screen if you want and do that, but I figured I was going to have to print mine up anyway, so let's see if I can kill two birds with one stone here and get it to transfer all in one go. So here I'm taking the wet ink and I'm rubbing it really hard with an old credit card and there you go. You can see your font right there. So coming up next here is a nice little trick. You're going to see me color this in with a permanent Sharpie marker in a minute. I'm just cleaning up the edges. And I wanted to pass on a tip that I just recently discovered, but I wanted to test it out about five times before I was sure that it did work. I have been applying my Sharpie marker super light on the surface of my paint where I'm literally just touching it feather light and allowing the ink to bleed into the paint rather than pressing down really hard and scribbling. Now it looks like I'm doing that here because this is sped up, but I'm not. I'm actually going really slow and letting the ink just kind of, like I said, just kind of overflow onto the paint because a lot of times when you use markers on top of paint, you'll find after, I don't know, maybe seven times of doing that, your ink suddenly isn't flowing very well out of the tip anymore. So chemicals, substances, whatever, they're coming off of the paint and they're clogging up you know, the tip of your pen and obstructing the flow of ink. Now I have tried soaking my tips in alcohol, paint thinner, nail polish, acetone, painting it on top of Mod Podge, and those didn't work for me. I think with Mod Podge, I didn't wait long enough for it to dry. That might work if you wait a full 24 hours, but if you don't wanna wait a long time and you just wanna move on with your craft, remember to tap, tap, tap that ink on the paint surface, it will buy you more time. Next, we're going to be taking some Dollar Tree ribbon. I love this ribbon, you guys. I think it is such a perfect burlap ribbon for farmhouse rustic, vintage, whatever you're doing, like any kind of vintage thing you're doing. I think this is gorgeous. I was so excited when I found it. And I'm gonna be showing you how to make a floral bow. That's what it's called. It's called a floral bow. It's been around for as long as florists have been around because it's been used in floral shops. Now, I see it a lot on YouTube and they show you the loops. They show you how to slit it in the middle, but what they're missing right here is that nice little angled cut that you do in the center. Now, if you're going to embellish stuff in the center of your bow, like more ribbon or pine cones or flower, whatever you're gonna put, if you're covering the center, it's not a big deal, you can stop with the slit. But if you're going to use the bow on its own, like for a wedding bouquet or on top of a gift, it really is important to have that graduated angle going down so that you have a nice center of the bow because you're going to see the center and it looks better. The next step you see me doing here is you pull out the loops in opposite directions and you spin them a little bit. So you're just trying to make a complete circle. And of course, like with every craft, it's done by eye. But if you were to read like a 1950 manual on it, that's what they would tell you to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and put ribbon on the center of mine. So it's not totally critical that I did that, but I just wanted to show you guys how to make an official floral bow and tell you the name of it is called a floral bow. And they're really neat and pretty and fun to make. So I'm making a little smaller floral bow there, gluing it in the middle, and now I'm taking some Dollar Tree pine and to make it look a little more expensive, I'm cutting it down. You don't have to. You can also flock it or sponge some darker green on it. That makes it look more high end too. But that's what I, I like the little pop of color, but I don't like how scraggly it looks. So I usually want to do something to dress it up a little bit, but it's cheap and it works. 
and here's some spring florals from Walmart from this spring. When spring comes, you guys stock up on those gray green, like army colored green florals there. They are perfect for fall and Christmas, I think, and even spring. They're just like an all year round, great piece of greenery to have. And this is what we finally have, you guys, and I absolutely love this. I think it came up so beautiful. So for this next craft, you're going to need the Dollar Tree peace sign. I chose this one because it has a center Christmas tree and you can see me taking my pencil there and just making the opposite side match the other side because I have an idea for this. And I start out by painting the whole thing white. I want this to be really fresh, bright and happy. So there's a lot of angles on these signs just a warning ahead of time i have tried spray painting them in the past and you will use so much spray paint to get all of the angles that it ends up not being very cost effective your sign is not going to cost anywhere near a dollar anymore if you do that it's probably better just to take your time put on your favorite movie favorite music whatever you like to do while you're crafting and paint it and just have fun with it so I was feeling very Yuletide-ish, almost like the fairies outside may have decorated it. So nothing dark, everything bright, happy, green, alive. I was thinking of that evergreen that hangs off like a floppy garland on mantles. In fact, I'm going to be buying some this year. I've always wanted it where it kind of gracefully drapes off the mantle. I think that is so beautiful. And then I'm just going to stain the center tree. I don't want a really solid green heavy paint because I do want some dimension under this because we're going to be covering it with some moss here that we cut down really, really small. You know, because when I put it on, I want it to be as flat as possible. So you're going to see me put some Mod Podge on top of this and then put the moss on top of it. Now you can use the green peas that come in a bag. They're hard. In America, we use it for a split pea soup. In the UK, it's for something like mushy peas. But those, when you pulse them in a blender to a very coarse grind like a crumb, they make a beautiful textured, rustic covering and I have used them in many many crafts in my lifetime and I love working with those so if you don't have the moss don't worry you can still cover your Christmas tree with something you can also just sponge on green paint or different colors of green paint to make it textured I mean just have fun with it and you can even just paint it white if you want but I wanted mine green so after I cut it really really small because I want the moss to be as flat as possible I just glue it on and that's it After I put the moss on, I realized that I need to balance out the green a little bit more to match the heaviness of the moss because the moss is very textured. So I just go ahead and apply some more green paint. And I also realized it didn't look too much like the evergreen. I mean, I knew I couldn't get it exact, but I wanted it to definitely, you know, so you can see it from a distance and it just wasn't enough. And here are some decals from the Dollar Tree and I just thought how pretty the star fits perfect and it's just that little bit of sparkle to make it Christmassy and add that magical touch like fairies did it. So came out really, really pretty. I love this. For this craft, you're going to need that burlap banner they sell at the Dollar Tree. It's in the party section. The sign with the little wooden beads, 
one of the joy plaques and that red berry garland I guess I love that stuff that's over by the florals at least in my Dollar Trees I was trying to give you the locations where they're located in my Dollar Trees and I'm taking one of the little banners there I'm just making it a square and I fray the edges by pulling the threads and then I decide since this is Christmassy I want to add a little bit of Jack Frost around the edges so I'm just taking some white paint and sponging on a little frost almost like you see how you frost the edges of a window that's what I wanted to do with the burlap but I you know this is a farmhouse theme so I use the burlap and blow drying it and now I'm taking the joy sign using hot glue now normally I use a super glue on these but because I'm sticking it to material it's gonna stick just fine with hot glue so that will work and I'm gonna glue it down in the center of the sign Unfortunately, this sign's frame is plastic and that just doesn't fly with my farmhouse rustic decor. So I'm taking a little bit of the Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel Paint and I'm just rubbing it on with my finger and distressing the sign to give the illusion of it being wood. And I love this berry garland from the Dollar Tree. It's beautiful in its simplicity. It's not gaudy. They're using twigs with a little accent of red here and there. I love it. And I thought, wouldn't it be cute to make a little mini swag for the top of this picture frame and just add some embellishment on the top to cover the middle there. So I'm adding one of the Dollar Tree little Christmas ornaments and some jute twine. And I just thought that was so, so cute. Now here in the next scene, I left it in because Here's the thing, look at who I have, I have a visitor. Look at that. And I have no idea he's there. And what's even stranger is I had no idea he jumped up for about a good 30 seconds before I noticed him because I was so into my craft. But anyway, I thought that was so cute. He's come to say hello. So hello everybody from Thomas and Merry Christmas he says. Anyway, the draw for me on this sign was the wooden beads. and. I kind of entertained the idea of putting some wire at the top and having another arch, but then that's too many like swags. And this is a three tiered tray decor piece for me. So in the end, I decide that that corner in the right hand lower area there is too empty and it needs a little bit of embellishment. So I put the wood beads there and it came up absolutely beautiful. Now here is a sign I got at the 99 cent only store for $1.99. I fell in love with that frame. It's not the frame, it's like the inside cardboard piece. It kind of looks like faux metal. At Christmas time in particularly, I love to capture some of that merry old England Charles Dickens vibe. But when you have rustic farmhouse in your home, it's tricky to get it to blend in and keep that little bit of continuity going in your home. So the first thing that I did was I tore out the glass, that's gotta go, and then I painted the back cardboard black. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of the Home Depot paint and go around the edge here. Now this is Home Depot boo-boo paint. I get it for 50 cents. It's four times the amount of the Apple Barrel paint and it's a great deal for crafting, so make sure you check it out. We're at the Home Depot there and see if there's some there for you. It usually comes in neutral colors. It's high quality paint and it's usually matte too. So a nice flat paint for you. And now I'm distressing the actual frame and I'm adding a little bit of the Apple Barrel paint in Nutmeg, my favorite color for doing faux rust. But I'm looking to make it look rusted 
but also to tie it in with the next step that I'm going to do. So I'm kind of trying to do two things at once here and I'm putting the frame back on and now I'm going to take the Dollar Tree wood little pieces there and lay out a Christmas tree. Make sure that you lay everything down first before you commit with gluing because these pieces have little subtle curvature in it so you want the curves to go in the right direction. It kind of aids like the look you can either make it work for you or make it work against you so it's good to go through and try different pieces move them around and lay them where you want it and then I stand up so that I have a full view and make sure that I'm gluing everything down just perfect you can also just go out to mother nature and cut some sticks down and do this craft too and you can get a frame at the Dollar Tree I mean or a garage sale thrift store this is a craft for everybody For this craft you're going to need the Dollar Tree Party hats and you're going to start by removing the elastic. Now the elastic is not attached to anything as you can see so make sure if you use them for actual party hats you guys glue them because they'll just fall right off the kids heads. And I'm just reinforcing them now with a bit of hot glue. I'm going to be making two crafts here. You can make as many as you want. We're making some Christmas trees and I'm going to start off with a light coat of white paint just to tone down the design. I'm not looking for full coverage, I just don't want it to be glaring. And I'm using some mop threads. Now again, you can use twine, rope, whatever you want, whatever your imagination thinks up to cover these. But I have my house in rustic farmhouse and so the mop goes really, really well for that theme because it's a bit, you know, rustic and it, it just looks like it, it just crosses over into that genre and it also crosses over into boho and boho farmhouse so if you do that one that's fun as well and I personally think this is a really cute look for any look I think it just makes a super cute Christmas tree it's it's very versatile that way you can dress it up or dress it down now I'm adding a toilet roll or it might be a paper towel center there the cardboard piece because I'm going to be making my trees taller than the party hats that's the way you go about camouflaging that you used party hats and you make your craft look very high end and you can make your trees as short or as tall as you want I just did it by eye and you know until until it was to a height where I thought it looked good for me because I knew where I was going to place it in my house for the Christmas season and I'm just finishing up covering all of it with mop thread here it's that simple you guys it's kind of you know takes a little time but the results are worth it because it's so beautiful and so rustic looking my next tree I'm using driftwood now you can use any kind of wood you want if you happen to be lucky enough to live near a Dollar Tree that has those wood sticks that they sell that would make a really nice cover and as you can see I'm making this one a little taller and you can also just go outside to good old mother nature and collect some sticks and cover it that way. And Rosemary actually has a video where she goes over how to make homemade driftwood. And I don't know what video that is, but it involved soaking the wood. You pick the bark off and then you soak the wood in water, bleach water for, that's the part I don't remember is how long. I actually bleached mine to kill any little critters that I may have brought back by accident from the beach. And it brought them up super light like this. And personally, I probably would just pick up wood and soak in bleach water with the bark on because I think that would make the bark all soggy and loose. You could just peel it off, but you'll get 
almost an identical look to this if you want this exact look. Bleach water does amazing things to wood. So, and uh, you can do it by eye too. You just leave it soaking in that bucket outside until you see that it's turning the color that you want it to, you know, keep testing it, reach in, see if the bark peels off, see if the wood is light under there. Probably don't need exact instructions because that one is, I think, more by eye. But anyway, this came out absolutely gorgeous, you guys. The whole time I'm doing this craft, it's so cute. My jaw's hanging open because I'm like, oh, that's so beautiful. And it's so heavy. In fact, both of these ended up being super heavy and sturdy, which I was really, really pleased about. Now, here's where I would give additional instructions. I'm changing it up. I would not paint the party hat white. I have to go back with burnt umber and paint all of the visible little white areas to cover it up. So if you know you're going to do something, anything that you want to cover these trees with, and you know that it's going to need a dark base underneath, start off by painting it dark for sure. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. That's why I painted them both white. And here I just went out to my garage and I sawed two pieces of scrap wood that I had and I'm just using a little bit of wood glue to glue it together. I didn't nail it. Wood glue was perfectly fine. It held beautifully. And I'm just going to tack that down. And these are going to be the tree trunks. Again, my look in my house is rustic. So everything I do has to kind of go in that theme. But you guys can use anything for the trunk. You know, let your imagination go. You can even use a really sturdy, super thick. I think they come in the center of foil. And sometimes you get them with wrapping paper. But you get the centers that are really, really thick sometimes that you you literally need a saw to cut the center of them those would be okay for a trunk as well and of course you can always go out to mother nature and get a bigger stick and use that and then just glue that on the bottom of a platform so I'm turning it upside down there I put jars around it to help hold it up you do need you know quite a bit of hot glue in there or I mean it's not like you use the whole stick but don't just do one or two little squirts. You need to make sure that it's nice and steady inside that middle there, at least with mine, because they were heavy. So I took some Dollar Tree ribbon here. I cut it down the center to make it thinner. This is gonna be the top of my tree, which I really had to think about because these are rustic trees and I didn't want them to go too frou-frou. So I was sticking with the rustic theme here. And I also took some of the Dollar Tree lace ribbon. I cut that thinner as well to tie it in the center. I love that lace ribbon. So I liked the contrast between the lace and the burlap. One of my favorite ways to rust anything up that's metal is using cinnamon and paint. Now some people put glue or Mod Podge and they roll it in the cinnamon, but I find paint works just fine. And then you mist it with some poly acrylic or hairspray afterwards to hold it on. But look at that, it looks so legit. So for this, I wanted the rusting to look really good. And ultimately I decide as a tree topper, I wanna to use these Dollar Tree bells. So I'm just painting some it was burnt umber from apple barrel paint on there and then the cinnamon is sticking wherever the paint's wet and i miss it with some hairspray later this is the dollar tree a totally cheesy pine you guys this it, it looks cheap i have to admit so what i do to dress this up and make it look more expensive is i cut it down really really short and I usually use a dark green paint that I kind of sponge on to make it a darker green pine, or sometimes I take white paint and frost it up, but you can actually dress that pine up. It's very workable and it's very cheap and you know, you can make it look high end. I decided for this particular craft, I just wanted that nice pop of color, the brighter green, so I left it. Oh, doesn't it look cute though? Look at that. That's the first top right there. So rustic cute. And this is gonna be the second topper, but I decided I wanted it to be a little bit different but complimentary so I end up tying some twine on it and I'm gonna hang the bell off of the wooden tree and these came up absolutely gorgeous
For this craft, I'm using the Dollar Tree stovetop covers. The first thing I do is take them outside and spray paint them white on the front and the back, even though the back has white already. You don't have to, I just wanted to do that. And then I take a drill, I drill some holes through. It's paper thin, so that was so easy. It's like I almost punctured them. You know what I mean? You probably could do it with a nail if you have something really firm. Don't just hammer it because you'll bend the stovetop covers because they're that thin. They they're just flimsy so you have to be kind of careful on how you go about getting those holes in there but I decide that the white looks too you know just monotone now this is one of the few times you will actually see me use white shiny paint the paint I have is a gloss because I wanted to go ahead and sponge on some of the flat white paint to give it some dimension and sparkle like real snow looks when you're outside you know it's not flat it has dimension and it sparkles in the Sun so this is what I'm attempting to do. I'm trying to make my snow look like real snow. So the darker areas there actually shine a little bit from the spray paint and the light areas are matte. So it ends up looking really, really pretty. And now I'm just drawing the face on. Now I tried to draw some eyes by, you know, no, I just did it on my own and I erased five times. It was comical and I said, forget it. So I ended up cutting out a shape. I don't know if I have OCD or what, but I wanted my eyes to be even and I wanted them to be the same shape. So I did end up cutting something out and I used it to make the eyes nice and even. And then I just drew a quick mouth on it and a little smile. And I was actually using my phone. I saw a face online that I thought was really, really cute for a snowman and I'm copying it. And I'm just filling in the eyes here with some black paint. Now, if you live by such a hole in the wall Dollar Tree that you can't even get stovetop covers, don't worry because you can still do this with a top at like pots and pans the lids you can use the lids to do this craft and you don't have to do the body of the snowman you can make just a head if you want and then glue a scarf on the bottom to kind of fill it in so don't let it stop you the handle too on the lid by the way makes a super cute nose for the snowman so don't let it stop you still make your snowman they make great door hangers for the front door and you can embellish them super super cute and of course again because my house is rustic I did some dry brushing with some pewter gray from apple barrel paint and now I'm just using the burnt umber to do the buttons which I love the way they kind of you can see the paint swirls and brush strokes that makes it look so much more rustic I thought that came out so so cute and I'm using last year's baby blanket from the Dollar Tree there in the Buffalo check I decided that this would make a super cute scarf for his neck because you got to kind of cover that little neck area there since it's not you know too flattering you, you can see the wires and I'm just gonna go ahead and use hot glue to make a scarf and then tie it around his neck and I do hot glue the scarf on places strategically so that they stay looking you know I want the scarf to look like it's blowing in the wind so I glue it in that position I glue it to be tucked under his chin and then I kind of gather it up you'll see me in a minute here I'm gonna gather it up and I'm just gonna make the scarf have the illusion that it's blowing in the wind So I'm cutting a little fringe here on the end, which I should have done first before I tied it around because it was really difficult to do it this way because everything was glued, but it worked out. But make sure you do that first. And I'm using 12 inch shims from Home Depot. I can't get that 15 inch one, even though I ordered it. For some reason where I live, they just don't get it. So these are 12 inch and I'm just taking and cutting them. Now I'm having to use a saw because I went a little bit lower than my scissors or clippers could handle because they do get thicker as they go down, they're graduated. But of course, I'm making his little black top hat. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but I do use the pieces I cut off to make the top rim because my house is rustic. I get away with that. It just kind of has that palette look and you know, waste not, want not. Here I'm using some masking tape and I'm going to put a little bit of back support on this little guy. And I use some of the towering blocks from the Dollar Tree. You can use any piece of wood or stick to do this. You just need to raise it up a little bit because once you put them together, you have to get it higher. You know, you can't glue it. He's not flat because of the the rim around the edge and I'm using some super glue gel that fix all right there I mean business <laughs> this actually sits overnight with a big heavy book on top of it to make sure it dries and I just use a painter stick and glue it down and I'm using the same strong super glue fix all for his hat along with some hot glue because all of these things you know they sturdy the snowman up so that he's nice and 
solid and he's not going to fall apart. And there I'm gluing a little hanger on the back and I'm just going to cover it with some masking tape for some extra support. So I used one of those little Dollar Tree wood pieces for a very rustic nose for this guy. Look at that, that is so cute. And of course I'm using the heavy duty glue you guys because I want a strong hold. So I decide this needs a little pop of color and I just put a little tiny bit of orange but he came up super, super cute and super rustic. Check this out you guys, this is stovetop covers. For this craft, you're going to need some Dollar Tree jute twine, although you can get the twine anywhere. It's not just an exclusive Dollar Tree item. And I did try to do this craft by eye, and I ended up using craft sticks and cutting them down in little cascading lengths to get it so that it came out more perfect because it wasn't working the other way. And all I'm doing here is I'm just wrapping my twine around the craft stick. And I'm going to make a little a tiny jute twine bows because I thought they would be so, so cute in different lengths to make a very rustic Christmas tree to make a Christmas tree ornament with. So I floated back and forth between making a Christmas tree ornament and making a three-tier tray decoration. So I'm going to run down how I would have made the three-tier tray decoration for those of you that look forward to that. You go ahead and you make these bows in all the different little cascading shapes and then you're going to take your craft stick there and of course I'm going to go ahead and make a little quick stain here with a little bit of burnt, well burnt umber and a little drop of black paint. You can see what I'm doing and I add some water to it and that's just a really quick cute rustic stain for the trunk of these trees. But you're going to glue the twine on the front and the back if you want it for a three-tier tray decoration. And then you just hold it up with some little towering blocks on the bottom there. You just make a little platform. I just thought that would be such a cute Christmas tree. And you know what? You can decorate it with bows, jewels, buttons. You know, the sky's the limit. Just use your imagination. They are so much fun to make. And you can even leave them one-dimensional like I am and mat them on a canvas, on a piece of wood, hang them on the wall as a picture. They're they're just super, super cute little farmhouse rustic trees. I love this craft. You saw me there cutting the Dollar Tree ribbon at the center to make a thinner little lace ribbon and I'm using the same craft stick to wrap around and around here and I'm just going to make like a little miniature floral bow for the top of one of these trees. And then I find a super super cute like rustic metal button in my button collection. I don't even know how it got there but it was perfect for the center of this bow. It comes up super super cute you guys. For the second tree, I decided to go for one of those little Dollar Tree stickers for the top, but sky's the limit, you guys. Use your imagination. You can top this with so many things. I even considered collecting some little mini sticks and making like a little tiny mini star out of it and then putting it on the top, but just have fun and use your imagination. That's what crafting is all about, but these were so much fun to make. And you just put a little hanger on the back. Again, minor Christmas tree ornaments if you're not doing that, but check these out you guys they came out absolutely beautiful and totally farmhouse rustic For 
this craft you're going to need a Dollar Tree cookie aluminum baking tray which you can probably get anywhere a shower caddy and a box and this goes out to those people again who are asking me all the time to show them more crafts on how to get rid of those Amazon boxes we're using an Amazon box you guys so the first thing I do is I cut off the bottom hooks on that shower caddy you can see it right there the bottom's going to be flat and now I'm just going to cut that box down and make it the shape to wrap around that shower caddy because I didn't have a box the exact same size. If you have a box the exact same size, like a cereal box or something like that that fits perfect around the shower caddy, you can skip this step. I did not, at least not in one with, you know, a strong cardboard. I wanted a nice, thick, strong cardboard for this. It's easy enough to do. Cardboard bends, as you can see, you can make new creases, you can bend it in any which way you want, but this cardboard's nice and thick. Anyone can go to the Dollar Tree down the crafter square aisle and just buy a bunch of craft items, slap some paint on it, some bows, flowers, glue everything together and say, voila, there it is, a craft. And it does, it looks really good. But if you don't live by Dollar Trees that offer all those things, it can be really discouraging. So when you can take an everyday boring, like you walk by and think it's junk stuff, and turn it into beautiful home decor, it is so much more exciting to me. For me anyway, it's more of a challenge and I know for sure everyone watching this video can make at least one of these crafts and they won't be left out. I'm just gluing everything and taping everything together as you saw for reinforcement and here I'm cutting and I left this in to show you see how I cut and keep bending it away cut bend it away that's so you don't cut yourself really badly and make sure you do that and that you're really careful because that is metal and it will slice you good if you don't so wear gloves if you don't feel like you can remember to do that I'm very clumsy and I usually cut myself, but it worked really, really well for me just to cut it, bend, cut it, bend. I do decide the cardboard is too tall, so I take it and shave it down and I add more tape. And now I'm just going to cover it with these baking trays right here. Super easy, I just use hot glue and it is literally like wrapping a Christmas gift. You're going to glue it on, cut the edges right there at an angle and then bend them in just like a Christmas present. quick little reminder because you see me using my silicone spatula which I got at the Dollar Tree it's also available on Amazon I have the link below in my description box I get a lot of questions about that blue spatula on the side there you can also find it at Walmart it's a makeup spatula it's hundred percent silicone but reminder metal conducts heat you guys it is scolding hot once you start gluing it down so just be careful and be aware of that and here I decide that I don't really want that real pitted look. You can leave it if you want because hammered metal actually looks very similar to that. But I want mine to look more like beaten up metal or beaten up hammered metal. You know what I mean? I just want, again, <laughs> rustic decor. So I need mine to do a little, I need to take it up a notch. So I take it outside and I go ahead and give the entire thing a spray with that Rust-Oleum paint, including the metal part because I want it all to match. It also tones down the shine a little bit because we're doing a nice old rustic distressed metal. So here we go with the nutmeg color in apple barrel paint and I'm just going to go around the edges where the seams would be and where the metal would rust naturally from being outside and being exposed to the oxidization and the stress of the weather changes. And I don't know if you can see right there, I did put some masking tape along the edges where I felt it was too sharp. And I'm going to keep this forever because it came out that good. 
that I'm going to be handling it. So I didn't want to cut myself. So anywhere you guys feel like it's a bit dangerous, go ahead and cover it up. Now I'm just taking some really beautiful, I like the darker forest greens for farmhouse decor for Christmas. I mean, sometimes I'll go bright, but for the most part, you'll see me use this color. And I don't remember what color it is, you guys, but it's basically, I think it's called forest green, actually. But I saw a aged piece of metal online where they had the old green paint on there and it had rusted and so I'm going for that look I want that vintage feel that rustic farmhouse and I decide to use the Christmas tree ornament from the Dollar Tree and tear that Merry Christmas sign off because I want that in the center I'm just gonna spackle up those holes and you, you can use anything you guys can hand write it on there also this can be an all-year-round wall hanging to put your mail in your letters you would have to cut the little bars out of the shower caddy I chose to keep them because they kind of work as a foam to hold your florals up since I'm going to be putting florals in it but if you don't want to keep those little I guess those little um, grill pieces in there just slice them off and you can hang this on the wall all year round and for your words you can just hang like a little mini chalkboard off of it and write whatever you want and then change it out and write mail on it for the rest of the year but I'm making just a Christmas decoration so I glued everything down and you can see I'm just embellishing it with Dollar Tree little mini ornaments I wrap them in twine to make them more rustic I distress them a little bit with some burnt umber and I put the little pine cones on the front all of that embellishment on the front there is from um, the Dollar Tree except for the sparkly little holly leaves those came from Michaels about three years ago and now I'm just taking a little bit of burnt umber and going around the sign to age and distress it as well and I'm using florals these are also from the Dollar Tree aren't they gorgeous you guys but again I'm doing a front door hanging but this would be a perfect all year round piece and it came up stunningly beautiful For this craft, you're going to need some foam board or cardboard. I had a dish that I traced to make the circle. You could use whatever you want, but you're going to be cutting out the shape of a wreath. I'm using a really sharp utility knife. It's from the Dollar Tree. And once you have that shape cut out, you paint it black. Now you could use a dark brown, but you just need a darker color so that it has shadows so that you can't see the white foam board. Now if you use black foam board, you could skip this step. What I like to do while I'm drying foam board is to make sure I'm pressing it flat the entire time. The outside paper does have a tendency to shrink from wet paint and then cause the foam board to curl. So if you hold it down flat while you're drying, the best you can, you just kind of use your little fingers and be a little pokey about it. Don't slam your whole hand down if the paint's kind of wet. It dries really fast, but it does stop it from curling, which is nice. Now here you see me using the Dollar Tree wooden sticks. I'm going ahead and gluing them around in a wreath formation and I do suggest you lay those out ahead of time before you commit and here's the Dollar Tree pine now I love this garland here I go ahead and take a little white spray paint and just flock it I've used different colors of green before to make it look more expensive and high-end but it's a lot of fun and it works great for crafts and it's super super cheap so you know I love it and I'm just using it to fill in where you can see the foam board in different places and now I'm going to use some of the reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree. <music> I 
I take this moss and the goal is to cover up every last bit of that foam board on the edges and on the inside edge as well so that you can't see it. And I wanted this wreath to be kind of whimsical. I mean, for those of you that watch my videos, you know I love that really fresh, natural, where you take nature and bring it inside or it looks like the fairies kind of helped make it from the forest. I love that yuletide look. I think it's so beautiful and so high-end looking. I think anytime you can take anything from nature and make it look beautiful, it's a wonderful thing. So that, that, that I just thought the moss with the bright green, for those of you that have seen the moss, the reindeer moss at the Dollar Tree, it has such a bright fluorescent green that I even choose to kind of cover up a lot of the pine with it because as I'm working on this craft, I realize that the moss looks a lot prettier than the pine. The pine looks better with just a little bit sticking out here and there. And I'm just using some bells now to garnish this wreath. Now a nice surprise I discovered with the gold bells is when you hit it with that nutmeg color from Apple Barrel, they look like genuinely old, like the whole thing looks rusted. I got these bells from the 99 cent only store and they were a set of ornaments and I was going to throw them away and then it occurred to me I should keep them for the bells and gold ends up being a really outstanding color for looking old and rustic. Now I'm also taking some burlap here. It was just a little strip and I frayed the ends by pulling the little thread a little bit and I'm just doing, you know, I showed you how I folded it. I'm just doing a little bit of extra garnish there and gluing the bells on top. And finally, I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree Buffalo Check Ribbon and make a bow to tie on the top. And I'm using a little bit of the Dollar Tree jute twine in the middle of the bow. You can use a pipe cleaner, you can use wire, whatever you like. I just always fall back on the jute twine because I like farmhouse rustic. So that's one of my favorite things to tie the center of a bow with. And I'm using it here as well to make a little hanger for the back. Nice little trick there. If you use hot glue, put some masking tape on top of it and it will kind of melt into the glue and become one and solder it together nice and tight so it doesn't come off. And here's what we end up with. And I think this is absolutely beautiful. For this craft, you're going to need the Dollar Tree pizza pan. And I took it outside and gave it a nice coat with this paint right here. And I'm choosing to use a page from the Brave or Be Brave calendar from the Dollar Tree. Now you can use any imagery you want from online. Oh my gosh, you guys, at Christmas time, the blogs have so many beautiful free printables. So don't let that deter you at all. You could probably find something almost identical to this online. And I just took the largest stovetop cover from the Dollar Tree and used it as a template to get a nice circle shape. And I'm going to cut this in a circle shape. Now this was a tip from a few of you uh, viewers. I'm not sure there were so many of you that gave me this tip that I couldn't <laughs> list you guys all here, but thank you so much. You suggested that I paint the back of the calendar so that the, you know, I didn't risk having the calendar numbers and lines show through. So I'm going to tell you what my experience was with this. I've only done it once, so I can't form a full opinion. It did accomplish that goal where I couldn't see the numbers and letters through it, but it does darken up the image. So I wasn't happy with that part. I mean, it ended up coming out beautiful and, you know, you make things come together. But it, that's something, you know, gosh, I wish there was another way around it but besides doing it that way. Or maybe I could have, you know what, I could have probably put it on top of a black pizza pan maybe that I spray painted. But I wanted this to be light and bright. That was the look I was going for. So see how it's kind of like a grayish color there. And it does dry a little bit lighter, but to make it all kind of go together, I end up taking this gray color, and you can use any gray color you want from Apple Barrel, and just dry brushing it here and there to kind of make everything blend in. And of course, 
I Mod Podged it down, you guys, and I'm going to seal it with Mod Podge as well. And I also had some more trouble, I have to be honest, with it wrinkling due to the paint being on the back of it. It kind of shrunk, you know, just like I was worried about with the foam board shrinking with the paper on top. It did kind of shrink the paper on top of the pizza pan, but just thought I should pass that on to you guys so you know. And as you can see, I chose some beads that I got from the 99 cent only store and I did that as the outer edge. I just thought those were so pretty. They're silver. I don't think the camera does it justice. Those bees are so pretty in real life. And I'm using the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm just adding some Dollar Tree ribbon and some ornaments and some of their pine cones or little mini pine cones. I do end up taking the bow off of the bottom corner there and moving it to the top of the craft because I just think it looks prettier and more balanced that way. And I don't know if you call this a wreath form or a door plaque or a plaque on the wall. I mean, it could be anything. I think when you look for it on Pinterest, they call it pizza pan art. That's kind of cute. And I'm doing the same trick here, you guys, with the masking tape and the glue. If you do this, you can hang it outside in the elements and it won't come off. At least it shouldn't. It never has for me in 20 years. If I do just hot glue, it comes off. If I do just masking tape, it comes off. But as long as I put those two together, they really like each other. They're good friends and it will stay hanging up. And now I'm just taking the bow and kind of placing it in a nice strategical placement so that it looks really pretty and flowing on the top of this little piece. And that's it. This craft came up so beautiful. Take a look. Now I'm using a scrap piece of wood that I have for this craft and one of the Dollar Tree little words there and some jute twine. You can also take a square Dollar Tree sign and cut it down. I think you can get about three pieces from the square one and you can glue them all together to get a thicker sign that will stand on its side. Or you can check out my video on how to make a fake farmhouse sign and that will work brilliantly for you as well. And you can make that one for pennies on the dollar. And I'm just taking a little bit of white paint here, dry brushing a rustic kind of rougher, unfinished, you know, look, unneat look on the wood. And I'm taking my favorite color for doing distressing and aging and making things look old and dirty, which is black, and doing that on the edges and wherever I think it looks good. And now I'm using the color in the Apple Barrel Nutmeg again, and I'm gonna paint these letters. Now, I wasn't trying to make them look like wood per se. I just want to give them a little bit of texture, but I think they look like wood. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I did choose to use the Super Glue Fix All Gel because these metal letters, if you apply it with hot glue, I know that's nice and easy, and I do do that sometimes, but for this particular craft, I wanted the letters to lay really flat and flush with the wood, and sometimes you risk not getting that with the hot glue. It can get a little bumpy underneath those letters, and I wanted a really strong, flat hold. I mean, you can see it from the side right there. It came up really good. And all I did then was wrap a little bit of that Dollar Tree jute twine around the end, use a little bit of flame to get rid of those stray hairs and then add those stickers again i've showed those stickers a couple times in my previous videos they're just these really pretty stars that have sparkly things and i just thought that went so well with the word believe and this is what we end up with and i love this <music>
Here's a Dollar Tree sign that I got and I have a package of those gingerbread foam sheets. Now they come in a package of 12, so that's a really good deal. They're super cute for all kinds of crafts, but they're a little thin for my liking. So I go ahead and I glue two together. And this time I do want the lumpy bumpy hot glue because it's going to add more texture and more realism to my gingerbread man that I'm making. Now I almost made this craft with the Dollar Tree rectangle pan. I just thought that would be so cute. You could spray paint it white, you could spray paint it black, or you could galvanize it. And you could even leave it like a regular pan if you want. But that would also be a super cute way to display this if you can't find a picture in the right size. Um, that would also work. So I know not all Dollar Trees are created equal, so I always try to give you guys options when I think of it. And now I'm just taking my chalk pen in white and making those little gingerbread man designs on that we all see on the real gingerbread cookies. I was in the mood for a straight smile on this little guy, so I'm using the top of a plastic. It's the cough syrup little measuring cups that comes with the liquid cough syrups you can get, like Robitussin. I've had it for years, and I'm using it as a template to get a nice straight smile, but a crooked one would still be cute. It would give him charm, so if you want to do it freehand, go ahead. And now I'm using those Dollar Tree little pearl beads that you can buy and sticking them on for the eyes. And I do end up putting some more of that super glue on those so that they don't fall off. These are the Dollar Tree buttons that you can find in the Crafter Square area. And I paint them green. And I love the way the green paint comes out streaky because that goes with my look. You know, it's my rustic look. And I give him cute little eyebrows. Look how cute he is. That is so cute. And I'm using the Dollar Tree Buffalo Check ribbon in the red and white. Make him a cute little bow for his neck and glue it down. And then I add those three buttons in a row down on his little cute tummy. And here's what we have so far. Now I'm standing back looking at him right now and I'm thinking, nah, you don't look like gingerbread. You look like foam. So I'm like, we got to do something here, a fix. So I take some of that color in nutmeg with apple barrel paint again, and I start painting him. Now, ideally you want to do this before you start gluing anything down or making any designs on him. It's just, I thought by the, you know, I thought when I decorated him, it would pass and I just wasn't going for it. I wanted the texture of real gingerbread. When you take them out of the oven, they kind of have that light and dark look. They have dimension. They're not just flat and monotone. And there it is. It, it came up really good. Now he's actually half wet, half dry there, so it's hard to tell and he's still drying even here. But in real life, he looks like real gingerbread. So I was really, really happy about that. And I do end up painting the eyes white again because they need to pop. When, especially when I put the paint on, it goes a little darker, so the eyes need to pop a little bit. Here's some ribbon I got from Amazon, and it was 50 yards, two and a half inches wide. And I will go ahead and leave a link down below in my description box. There it is, the one that I used. I thought that was a pretty good deal. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to the back of this frame. It's the cardboard piece. And I decide, I do have buffalo check material but I decide that I want to go for the ribbon to kind of try and make it look more like a shiplap or a paneling or something, or I don't know. I, I wanted it to have more texture than just flat material. And well, that's what I did and it came up super cute and I was happy. You guys, if you have material, you can use material. You could use even paper back there if you have some crafting paper, anything to cover the cardboard. And of course I have to paint that frame because it has those little gold beads on the edge which definitely does not go with my farmhouse decor. So I go ahead and choose white. That's always a nice fresh farmhouse color. And this was a last minute change you guys. This was so cute. I found a Santa hat in my craft stash and I just thought, oh, it, it made him so adorable. Now you could just make this out of 
felt or I even have some of that furry material you know you can make it out of that you can look around the Dollar Tree they have a lot of materials and socks and things like that in red I mean you certainly can just hand make one of those little Santa hats but it made him go from like cute to cute overload he is so cute let me know what you guys think in the comments but I love this little guy For this DIY, you're going to need a spare piece of wood or a Dollar Tree sign and this free printable. Now this is down below in my description box. You just go ahead and click on that link and it will take you to this free printable. This actually comes from a blog site and I'm going to show you now how I go about removing the words on the bottom of this printable. I like to use the program paint.net. It came with my computer but Two years ago you used to be able to get a free download online and I'm pretty sure you still can. And you just take that little highlight tool there where you're kind of grabbing an area that you want and you click cut and that's it. And it just removes it nice and easy for you. Now if the background is colored you'll get a white spot but when you're dealing with white it's super simple and now you don't have that on anymore. I'm just using regular old school glue here to glue it down. When it comes to decoupaging, from my experience doing it for 20 years, you can glue your image down with anything as long as you seal it in with the Mod Podge and it works just fine. So I go ahead and I glue it down. For those of you that watched my previous videos, you know that I had some trouble with the red ink in my inkjet printer bleeding because I switched to a generic brand. And to solve that problem, you just spray it with a clear enamel or a clear polyacrylic, any kind of clear spray. And what it does is it puts a light little shield of plastic on there. So after that, not only do you not have to worry about your ink bleeding, but you also don't have to worry about any wrinkling or crinkling of your imagery as, you know, I should have told you this sooner. I actually want to kick myself because I used to decoupage all the time on furniture and sell it. And I would go absolutely crazy when I would get a perfect image on there without one single wrinkle and when I would go to Mod Podge it would start to shrink and wrinkle again and I started spraying it with a clear spray you know because I thought oh I wonder if this will work and you know that's how you find out things I guess and it worked brilliantly so yeah if you don't want things to wrinkle and you don't mind waiting a little extra time for your craft that's how you prevent wrinkling and now I'm just taking that buffalo check ribbon that I got from Amazon I'll definitely check out Michaels and Hobby Lobby too for ribbons. They have really good sales and a lot of times it's much cheaper than the Dollar Tree. So definitely check those out when you're out shopping. And now I'm just adding the Dollar Tree little red buffalo check ribbon there. I love that. I just think it's so perfect for Christmas. It's such a festive color and it looks so farmhouse in combination with the black and white one. last but not least I am going to go ahead and put a border around with the Dollar Tree nautical rope. This nautical rope I love for Christmas and for any kind of nautical decor I think it's perfect. I think it looks like something that Santa would tie his sack with so I'm a big fan of this particular nautical rope at Christmas time. I think it's so cute and I'm just going to finish this off with a cute little bow on the top. And these bells came from the Dollar Tree too. And I wanted to show you here when I take them out, they're like on a string and I just cut the string and they came apart super, super easy. And then what I like to use, and I've been using this for years, are these little needle nose tweezers. You can get them at any pharmacy or I even found, I found these at the 99 cent only store, but I haven't seen them since. So I think it was a fluke but it's great for holding tiny crafts so your big fat fingers don't get in the way and start messing up the paint. And I just splot on a little bit of that rusty color in Nutmeg from Apple Barrel and here you have it and it came up so cute.
So what I'm doing in this video, because I thought 10 DIYs that are kind of hard might overwhelm you, I decided to put something in here for everyone. So I'm kind of rotating between kind of hard or a little more work, not hard, and then quick ones for people who work or who are busy or just want little accent pieces. So here's one of those Dollar Tree little window box houses and I'm just taking some black paint and I'm gonna give it one coat of black paint. And now I'm just taking the end of an old paintbrush stick and adding some snowflakes. Now here's the funny thing in this video, you guys. I don't know if you can see the cat fur on my thumb. <laughs> I just noticed that. I tell you, he was in the room and I was petting him. And of course I had to put him out because he kept jumping up. And I wash my hands because if I touch my eyes, they'll go crazy. But that's too funny. Anyway, here's the Dollar Tree ornament. I love this little red truck. You guys definitely pay attention to the Dollar Tree Christmas ornaments because they are so wonderful for crafting. And I'm going ahead and painting the entire thing red to make it look a little more rustic. Now, I actually like to paint over the glitter. I like the 3D look and the dimension that it gives. I just think it looks kind of cool. If you want to sand it off, you can. I went ahead and left it on. Then using some Dollar Tree ribbon, I made a bow. I'm gluing one of the little Dollar Tree mini pine cones in the middle of it and situating it so it looks nice and pretty. And that's it. You have a super, super cute, festive Christmas craft. For this craft, you're going to need a Dollar Tree Christmas tree and some Dollar Tree potpourri, although you can use any potpourri from anywhere. And you don't actually have to use a wooden Christmas tree either. I chose to do this, but last year I actually used a candy cane wooden shape that I had gotten from the craft store, Michael's, and I glued some cinnamon scented potpourri down in stripes and that made super cute bathroom decor piece. Every year I try to figure out a very festive decorative way to get beautiful scents of the holidays in my bathroom and around my home and I like to disguise them so they don't look real obvious. You know, I used to just put a bowl of potpourri in my bathroom or light a candle but now I try to put it in a way where it looks pretty still and festive and is of course in line with my farmhouse decor. So I just take the potpourri and you can see what I'm doing here. I just put like a garland on this tree and now I'm using some of the sisal rope and I'm gluing that down as well which I also like the smell of that. I think that smells really fresh like hay and the combination of smells right now as I'm crafting are really really pretty and soft. You can also take some essential oil and add a little bit more on the potpourri if it fades out before Christmas, but this is just a really clever way to disguise an air freshener in your bathroom or around your home. And it's fun to make too. And I'm just using this sisal rope now at the bottom for the little trunk area of the tree. And now I'm just gluing three of the towering wooden blocks together on the back so that this tree will stand up on its own. And I'm taking the garland of pit berries from the Dollar Tree and wrapping it around the tree just for a little bit more embellishment and, you know, festive colors for Christmas. I made a really simple bow out of the Dollar Tree jute twine. I end up making two bows to kind of make this more I guess thicker and heavier on the top because after I was done I didn't like it. The potpourri was kind of, you know, it's a very heavy look so I felt like it needed more on the top and you can see it right there and that's it. Came out super super cute.
here comes our next super easy DIY. You just grab one of those wooden boxes from the Dollar Tree and an ornament of your choosing. I chose ones with words, but you can put any flat ornament on it. And you're just going to glue it on the outside of this box with a little bit of hot glue. Glue it down on your sign, add some floral foam, some really pretty Christmas florals, and that's it. You have a super fresh, pretty Yuletide little accent piece for a bathroom or an entry table or a bedroom, and it was so easy to make. For this next craft, I'm using one of the Dollar Tree Red Truck wall plaques, little wooden wall plaques, and I took it outside, gave it a nice sand with my electric Ryobi little sander, and that was totally fine for what I wanted to do because I didn't want the Merry Christmas with the glitter to show. And then I'm just going to redo this sign now. So I'm starting out by painting the tree white, and I'm going to go ahead and give the truck a nice coat of red paint too. Now a lot of people will go, oh, why did you paint that red? It was already red. When you paint things like this, you actually do get streaky kind of brush stroke looks and it looks more expensive, I think, because if you go to Michaels or Hobby Lobby and you buy like a more expensive version of the red truck, you usually do see like the wood grain through it a little bit. So I actually like the brush strokes and the little streaks that paint leaves behind, I think it really ups your craft and makes it look more high end. That's just me. And now I'm just dry brushing a little bit of green on. I'm gonna use two different colored greens here so we have some contrast and dimension. And I'm gonna redo the Christmas tree to make it also look a little bit more expensive and classy looking. Now I'm just taking my favorite color black and edging this Christmas tree with it. I love black for aging and distressing. I think it's easy. It keeps it simple. You don't have to worry about what brand paint you're using. You can use anything. You can even use like an old mascara if you want, but it just, well, you'd have to seal it so it doesn't smear, but I love that color. And there's a free printable I made, which will also be down in the description box today. I'm going to include all the free printables down in my description box. So if you like something you see, make sure you check it out there. And I made this up, you guys. At first I was just gonna put joy on it and I thought, oh no, that's boring. I wanna give you guys some additional ideas because so many people have done that. I mean, it's a great idea, it looks super cute, but so many people have already done it. So then I thought, ooh, joy ride, that would be so cute. And then I thought, you know what is even cuter? Christmas joy ride. So I just think this is so adorable. I love that little phrase. So anyway, if you like it too, the free printable will be down below. Now, here's an old wreath that I'm going to kind of bring up to 2020 here. And this is how I go about flocking pine besides spray painting. I just take my old brush. Now I'm going to focus in on that brush here. You want a brush that's totally tweaked and thrashed just like that. The more old and gross it is, the better it works for flocking. So if you're using brushes for Mod Podge, like I do, and you forget that you're Mod Podging and it dries in there, don't throw away that brush because it works great for flocking around Christmas time. You just dab it on all over the place and look at that, it just does great snow. And I'm just gonna glue this truck right in the center of the wreath. And now I'm going to make another floral bow. Now I got so much positive feedback for showing you guys how to make a floral bow in the video where I did that, that I'm gonna show one more time in case some of you missed it because it really you know, is a beautiful bow to make. It's traditionally used by florist. Now this is what I read in a book that was like from 1951 that was my mother-in-law's mother's 
mother so it was her grandmother's book so these bows have been around for a long time and you start off by bending it and then cutting that slip but here's the important part that I think if you want your bow to be really finished looking and you don't want to worry about the center having like these kind of pointy edges in the middle you just cut it at an angle there down to the middle and then you'll have a nice graduated center that looks really really pretty when you start pulling this bows the little loops out you know to form that nice puffy round loopy circle and this bow or ribbon frays quite a bit so I just found if I float a little bit of fire over it that seals it up because it's polyester it melts it and seals it so it stops fraying and here I'm showing you how when you pull that loop out you twist it a little bit then you go to the other side of your bow pull it out and twist it a little bit and then go to the other side of the bow and pull it out and twist it a little bit and you do that around the entire ribbon loops all the loops and then you'll end up with a really pretty floral bow and they call it a floral bow because for a long time it was used by florists in floral shops for weddings and you know i guess every big event and i don't know a little bit of history of trivia there so i accidentally tied the tie on the wrong side so i had that little piece left and i decided to curl it for the middle because i thought that would look cute you're supposed to have the tie on the other side and then you would just cut that piece short so no one sees it and then the center would look really really pretty and you would have the tie left over here i'm showing you how you would have the tie normally on the other side where the loop is you would have the tie like this and then i just made another little bow and you can tie more ribbon on it this comes in handy if you're doing it for gifts for christmas gifts this is really nice and you save on hot glue but i usually get lazy and just hot glue everything together i just wanted to show you guys what your options are because these floral bows are kind of cool and that's it i just tie it on this wreath and i love this wreath it came out so high end and so pretty looking in real life And here's the next super easy DIY that I want to share with you guys. I've been talking about those beautiful gemstones that they're selling at the Dollar Tree and they have stars. And then they also sell this little glitzy ribbon at the Dollar Tree. And I wanted to have something to put in again my bathroom for, for I have more I have three bathrooms so I wanted another way to display potpourri that was really pretty and really festive but I wanted it to have a little bit of sparkle this time because I put Christmas lights white white Christmas lights in all of my bathrooms at Christmas and I put so many that you don't even need to turn the light on so I love to have stuff that picks up the light and sparkles because I just think that is very festive and it makes me feel really cozy and happy and you know excited about Christmas time it just seems magical so I thought this would be a perfect way to do that and you can see what I'm doing I'm just taking one of the Dollar Tree little vases there or vase I don't know how you pronounce that I pronounce it vase but someone said it's supposed to be vase I don't know so I take those little ribbons glue it at the top you know one at the bottom one on the top and then I'm just taking the stickers and placing them here and there and a little bit of hot glue now I'm using hot glue to do this because I actually don't want this to be permanent I want to be able to take it apart and pick the glue off after the holiday season but this is good enough just for the holiday season because no one's gonna be rough with it or store it you know it's it's just fine it's just gonna sit there and hold a little bit of potpourri and then I decide after I'm done that it needs a little bit more at the bottom there and you know I wish the camera showed how pretty this looks if you put it under those lights that you know the same lights they use in the jewelry stores to show the diamond sparkle this just glitters so much and it is so so pretty and so simple to make and there it is
For this next craft, I used one of the Dollar Tree wooden trays. I love these little trays for crafts. I think they are so fun and festive and easy to just do so many different things with them for the holidays, for all year round. Now I am making family and friends Christmas crafts this year. So I'm doing a mix of farmhouse and traditional Christmas. So there's more choices for you guys as well. And I go ahead and I do that fire engine red on this tray and I paint the bottom of it as well because this is one of the ones I'm going to be giving away for, you know, to my family. So First of all, I take the stencils from the Dollar Tree and I cut them because they come in a long, you know, one sheet and it was just too hard for me. It wasn't fitting in there and I always end up cutting them apart, you guys, because otherwise I can't really space them out. And as you can see, I'm using pencil. I also tend to use stencils to trace really lightly with pencil so that I can erase and make adjustments because every single time I try to stencil with paint, I always make a mistake and make the letters either too far or too close together. I do not know how these amazing gals do that on YouTube. I have seen them do it and I'm like, if anyone has a trick, please put it in the comments because I, I don't know if there's something wrong with my vision or my depth perception, but I always mess up. So I always take stencils and trace them with a pencil and then fill them in. So now I'm taking some deco tape from the Crafter's Square Dollar Tree. You can use any tape you want but I decided that the handles would be so cute with some candy cane stripes. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And here it is, super cute. And for this next DIY, it's another super easy one. I am using another Dollar Tree little house shaped window box. Now I bought a whole bunch of these when I found them because I knew they would come in so handy for crafts. If you don't have one, you can just use a Dollar Tree picture frame. That's fine, it would work just as well. And I'm giving this one a coat with my white chalk paint. That's a DIY chalk paint if you wanna check it out go check out the video and it'll give you more information on how to make that. It's got great coverage and I'm going to dry it. And again, Dollar Tree Christmas ornaments. Oh my gosh, I cannot emphasize how well these work for the price. You just buy an ornament, buy a little picture frame or a window box. And for $2, you can make these just simple decor pieces look so expensive and high-end and these make great three-tier tray decor as well anything in those little window boxes because they fit perfect on the tiered trays so anything you make like that you can add to your tiered trays they're just great ideas and they're super easy for people who are in a hurry or just want to add some little fun little festive pieces of decor to their home but they don't want big commitment to a lot of crafting and here's mr snowman i love him he came up so cute For this next craft, what I like to do is go to Home Depot and buy what's called a utility panel. It's 1 8 inch thick, so about the same thickness as a Dollar Tree sign. It's 4 feet wide and 8 feet long for $11.42 plus tax. Now I do this because obviously I make a lot of signs and if you do the math, you can get approximately 41 of the square signs like this. This is the exact exact measurements of the Dollar Tree square sign. I actually have one and I traced it. 
and I cut it out with my little mini circular saw and so the long skinny signs I think you can get 36 out of them maybe 35 36 depending on how accurate you are with cutting but if you want to save more money that's a great way of doing it plus they're real wood they're not that like cardboard pressed wood and I don't know it I, if you obviously if you have to make 41 signs you would spend $41 or $36 and I only spent 11 what it was it 11 46 or 42 I can't remember but plus tax and big savings there so that's the way I like to go if I didn't have that little electrical circular saw I probably wouldn't bother I would just use a Dollar Tree stuff but if you're a money saver like me I actually call myself an extreme discount uh, DIYer because I go super cheap whenever I can if there's other options I will use them not so much that things look cheap I mean there's no point going cheap if things look cheap but when you know you can keep it looking just as nice and even nicer in some cases it just doesn't make any sense not to try and save the money for me so I put white paint on then I did some of the green paint you can use any color green paint you want and now I'm going to go ahead and put some more white paint on top with a paper towel but this time I'm going to be pressing the paper down really hard and rubbing because what that does is it's going to blur and remove some of the green acrylic paint underneath because acrylic paint doesn't stick really really hard like that so this is going to give it that's the nice thing about acrylic paint by the way if you use like a Home Depot paint you can't rub it off it's really hard you can smear it but it doesn't actually lift this one will actually, you can see how it's fading at the top a little bit. This one will actually rub off a little bit and give that nice weathered, rustic, distressed look that it makes it look like it's an outdoor, you know, a sign that was outside for a long time, which is the look I'm going for for this. I'm actually making like a vintage um, Christmas sign. I love this look, this little, I call it my Oliver Twist Christmas look. I love this look. And that's another free printable, which will also be down in my description box. So if you like this font here and you want to recreate this sign, that will be available to you. And now I'm just using the permanent, those little Sharpie permanent markers. They come in a line that's supposed to be like galactic colors. And you get this really pretty wine burgundy red. It's I love this color, I, but I just wanted to tell you, I, did, I got it at Walmart. There was a set of four, I think they are called something to do with space, basically like think galactic. So love this color. And I decided to go ahead and color in the letters with the permanent marker instead of paint. And now I'm just using the cheap marker from the Dollar Tree. These are permanent markers. I actually love them. They're really nice. They work really well to do the shadows on the lettering here. I do that with the Dollar Tree marker. Now I'm just gonna hit the edges of this sign with a little bit of black paint. You just do it really feather light. I'm gonna show you up close here. You just do it really soft like that so it looks like the paint has chipped off and got dirty. You're just creating that illusion. I used to live where it snowed and that was one of my frustrations, you guys, is my wood windows, you know, the wood around the outside would always get black like this wherever the paint chipped. So I'm trying to copy that look now for decor. It's kind of funny, but, and now I'm just very, very softly doing a very dry brush of black over the surface and that's it i love absolutely love the way this sign came out it came up exactly how i was envisioning it So for those of you that watch my channel, I encourage you guys to keep any unusual, pretty, decorative bottles because they come in very handy for crafting. So today I'm using a maple syrup bottle that I saved and washed. And the first thing I do is take it outside and give it a coat of white spray paint in gloss because this is glass and I want it to stay shiny looking. And now I'm just taking the burnt umber 
from Apple Barrel and doing some dry brushing. And I'm using the tissue to wipe and smear it a little bit because I kind of want to darken up the white. The white was a really bright white and I don't want it to be quite so, you know, loud. So I'm adding obviously a little bit of rustic feel to this bottle and along with changing the overall color as well. Next, I decide to really highlight and bring out these really pretty designs on the bottom of the bottle. And I'm using the color Forest Green in Apple Barrel Paint. And as it suggests, it's a dark forest green color. I love that color for Christmas. And I'm just gonna go around now and touch up all the little accent areas to bring out that design. And here's another free printable for you. It will be in the description box. I made it says Santa's Christmas rum and I'm just using some regular glue there and I'm gonna glue this label down and yes I'm using my finger I did this because I was afraid if I used a brush I might actually accidentally remove some of the acrylic paint off of the spray paint because the spray paint had primer in it so I knew that puppy would stick but I wasn't confident about the acrylic paint because it rubs off so in order to control the scratching and the pressure I used my finger and just really softly spread the glue on and now I'm blow drying it and now I'm just taking a pencil and I'm going to write the word naughty on the towering wooden block and nice on the other one and then after i like the way the font looks and the lettering you know i'm not that good at it but after i'm happy with the way it looks i take the permanent marker from the dollar tree in brown and i just trace over it and i also forgot to tell you guys around the label that i glued on the front i do take some of that forest green paint and just take a sponge and gently kind of put like a little cloud around the edges of the um, label there. It doesn't stay just yellow like that. Now, here's the thing. I did have to tie that twine in a knot at the bottom and glue the knot on top of the block because I tried tying it on, I tried gluing it on the back and it just did not hang right. So make sure you tie a knot, super simple, and you glue on the top if you want them to hang nice on the side of the bottle. And then I take a wine cork, I cut it down a little bit because I want it a little bit shorter and I paint it in that forest green again from Apple Barrel. And I go ahead and put that in the bottle. And that's it, you guys. This is actually a very funny, comical DIY. It's a great conversation piece. For this next craft, I used some shims from Home Depot. I actually got 12 inch shims, they didn't have the 18 inch ones. And these little incense burner holder things from the Dollar Tree, I, I don't know what they're called, but you would, if you have a like incense, you would stick the stick in the little hole there and it, it provides a tray for the ashes to fall. Now I choose shims because the top tapers off and it's a lot thinner and easier to cut than painter sticks but you could use painter sticks if that's all you have if you know how to cut it at an angle you know if you have little machinery that does that I don't I just have these little clippers so I went ahead and I used a bowl upside down to trace and get that round shape and then I just cut it and this is just cutting and sanding this whole thing I, I sanded the shims a little bit uh, just to make them smooth I'm, I'm sanding the edges here and now I'm using some craft sticks from the Dollar Tree and I'm just using wood glue and hot glue to hold this all together so we get that nice palette look you know I love that where it's not a solid piece of wood for the sleigh I think that's so cute 
And these are those little square blocks that you find in the crafter square section. Some Dollar Trees carry them even if they don't have a craft section. And I knew when I saw them exactly what I wanted to do. I actually bought these back in the summer and the little incense things. So I hope they're still around all year. I think they are, but I knew I wanted to make a Christmas sleigh and I wanted to lift it up a little bit to be 3D. You could use the towering blocks. I think if you make I didn't want to use those because I thought they might be a little bit too big for the sleigh I was going to make but if you make one with bigger legs using painter sticks or something else you could also use the towering little blocks so I've seen another creator do that I can't remember who it was but I saw another creator do that so it just gives it a nice 3d look and you know that's always charming so here I'm taking the color Burnt Umber and Apple Barrel. You can use black or any kind of dark brown color you want. And I'm just adding a little distressing and a little bit of, you know, dimension and character there to make the sleigh look nice and rustic. For this part, I decided to use black because I needed a little bit more contrast. The burnt umber, even though it worked great on the cream color, wasn't working so well on the brown color, so I went with black to make it look nice and chippy and old. I'm just giving it a blow dry here. And then I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree Pine. For those of you that watch my videos, you've seen me do this multiple times. I just trim it down a little bit. It makes it look a little bit more expensive, and for, well, for small crafts for sure. And you know it, it fits better and then i'm using some of these gold bells that i got at the 99 cent only store and i'm showing you here how i'm taking this is twine from walmart you get this twine i think it's about four dollars and so much cents so it's close to five dollars when it's rounded off but i bought that that twine you see right there that roll has gone forever it is such a good deal so if you spend five dollars you'll have it for two or three years it's wonderful and there you see what I did. I just slipped it through that little metal thing because this time I didn't want to tie it on. I wanted them to hang really straight. And then I tie it at a knot underneath, push it down with some hot glue, and you can see me there pressing it down so it all looks like one joined piece. And I do that to two of the bells. Then I take some of the nutmeg color from Apple Barrel Paint. That is my number one to go to color for faux rust. I think it looks outstanding and I discovered it looks really outstanding on gold metal. Now, if you use silver, you can do the cinnamon technique. I show that in my very first Christmas video um, from everyday Dollar Tree items. You can find it that way in the little thumbnail. I show you how to do it with the cinnamon technique. If you want to do that and you have silver bells, that looks really good too. You keep some of the silver showing, but I'm going for a really primitive look where the whole bell is completely rusted. And I discovered these bells here worked you know color the color gold works outstanding for that look so i cover the entire bell and now i'm just going to tie them together and add a little bit of pretty embellishment to the front of this sleigh so i'm going to glue the pine down glue some of the dollar tree little mini scented they're cinnamon scented i love them those little mini pine cones they are so fun to work with this time of year and i add some little mini snowflakes but this is a solid wood sleigh you guys it looks so classy and beautiful in real life it is perfect for farmhouse decor <laughs> For this next craft, I am using a Dollar Tree summer sign that I got during the, well, it was actually at the end of summer because there weren't that many people shopping. So there was a lot of summer signs left. I made one for apple cider for those of you that watch my fall series. And now I thought it would be fun to make it for hot cocoa. So I just sand off the glitter. I go ahead and I'm gonna give this one two coats of primer, Kills 
it's the brand K-I-L-Z, Kills Primer. And something interesting happens here when I paint it, I start blow drying it. You'll see in a minute here. See how it's like bubbling up on the left side and I go, what is that? What is that? So I stick my little skewer thing under there and I realize I can just remove this whole thing. It made the paper so soggy that the whole thing just came off. Now I wanna know if any of you guys have ever tried taking a wet towel and laying it on top of these signs for like five minutes or something and how well that got the front label off. I tried blow drying it, that didn't work. If there's any tips out there, you know, that won't damage the cardboard underneath. I was always worried if I left a wet towel on it, the cardboard underneath would be all soggy. But if you guys have tried it and had good luck, if someone could write how long they did it for and you know, that kind of thing, I would love to do it that way. So here I'm making a free printable. It's, well, I made this and it's a free printable down below in my description box. You just click on that link, it will take you to it. And then when you get to that, click on it and right click your mouse and when it says save as you're going to download that photo to your computer and then go from there and you can take it and put it into a word program and shrink it or make it bigger whatever you want and then print it up that'll give you more you know i think um, that's what i do and it kind of gives you a better idea about how big it's going to be on your paper when you print it up is if you drag it into a word program and now i'm just taking some well i used carbon paper you can just scribble pencil on the back of it and I'm using permanent markers in brown and black and coloring it in but here comes the fun part I get some joint compound and I decide to do whipped cream on the top here and it came out so so pretty and real looking I just spread it on and I'm tapping my little craft stick there up and down to get the peaks and the valleys so it looks nice and whippy and authentic and a lot of fun here you guys I am sprinkling real cinnamon on it it looks so real if you do not live by a Dollar Tree that has Dollar Tree signs, and I have a lot of people from the UK I know that watch this and other people around the world that aren't located by a Dollar Tree, please check out my video on how to make a fake farmhouse sign. That technique will work for you and you can dupe anything once you have that technique down. So don't let that stop you. Please have fun and craft. And here it is, you guys, absolutely beautiful. So for this next craft, you're going to need one of those little skinny Dollar Tree signs. I own one and I actually trace it onto my wood and then cut it out because I go and buy the wood and it ends up being cheaper for me. I can get about 41 signs out of a utility panel for $11.46 and obviously I make a lot of these for family and friends and so for me it makes more sense to go ahead and go to the effort of cutting it out. It only works for the square ones and the rectangle ones. I'm not that good at cutting out little you know sophisticated angles or round circles but for a square and a rectangle this works great and of course if you're only going to make a couple little DIY signs for Christmas the Dollar Tree signs work just fine so don't stress out and if you don't have a Dollar Tree near you then use some spare wood or <laughs> again go to how to make one of those fake farmhouse wood signs that video and just do it that way but you can still do this DIY so today I wanted to have a try at painting a tall skinny rustic looking pine tree I've seen these before they're very on trend I want to put this up on my mantle this year with all my garland and so the way I'm doing it I'm not a professional painter but I approach this with dry brushing colors in layers so I do a bright green first which I got at the Dollar Tree the next color I do is that forest green it's actually called forest green and it's by apple barrel paint the next layer I do is white so that's going to give some dimension for the snow and then you'll see I'm going to do 
after this I believe I go over it with the bright green again and then I think I do more snow and then I hit it with the forest green and we get a really beautiful final result so there's no special painting skills required for this anybody can make this tree it literally is just dry brushing layers on at the angles you see me doing here I would like to add that it is important that you let each layer dry in between. I was blow drying. I know Bob Ross can do it when it's all wet. He's amazing. I don't know how he does that. But if you want the definite look of like little wispy branches and you want that dimension, you're going to risk losing that because you're going to smear the paint into like one big color. So make sure each layer is dry before you apply the next layer. And for this part, you can use any old brush you want. You're just tapping it on here and there to give the illusion of snow. And don't panic either if you get paint too far on the edge of the wood there. You see on the left-hand side there, I have that little green streak. I'm just going to hit it with some sandpaper. You'll see me do it in a bit. There I go. And it comes off easy peasy. So do not stress about things like that. They're totally fixable. Even on a Dollar Tree sign, you could sand it off lightly. So don't stress, just have fun. And you may notice the trunk is a little 3D there. I do use some of the burnt umber and just put a little few streaks here and there on the bottom of the trunk. Again, just to add some more realism and dimension. And I'm going to go all the way around the edge with the snow. And now I love this technique. I did this on a whim and I think it came up so pretty. I'm just tapping the brush and it comes up like snowflakes, like it's snowing on the tree. I thought that was so pretty. So, and that's it. I mean, that's, it, it looks to me, well, what I was envisioning, it came up perfect. That is like the ultimate little rustic tree that I've been seeing on Pinterest that I want so bad to put on my mantle. So I made one. Now I'm just hand drawing a star. I actually made the star a little crooked on purpose. Again, if you're going for that rustic look, at least with the look I'm going for, it's supposed to look a little bit not perfect, if that makes sense. So a little cute star that looks hand drawn that's sitting a little crooked is exactly what I was going for. And for this part, I'm just using the territorial beige and the burnt umber and I'm filling in the star and that's it. I mean, it's done and I love this. As promised, I am making some more three-tier tray decor for Christmas, and you're going to need some of the Dollar Tree towering blocks. Now, I hope you guys can follow the sequence of blocks that I do here. I was following it really easy because I knew what I did, and I sure hope it translates because I tried to pick up the most important scenes of what I was gluing together. So you can see there, I have two sets of three. I glue them together 
and then I glue two of those on top of each other to make a long rectangle. Now I'm gonna glue four of the blocks together and another four of the blocks together, and I'm gonna glue those on top of each other to make another size. And last but not least, I'm going to take three little blocks and glue them together in sets of three. So you're gonna have those two on the side to the left. I'm gonna glue those all together as well. And then we're going to be stacking those on top of each other to make a cube shape. And that's it, that's all you need to do. And for this craft, in my opinion, the hot glue is good enough. It holds together because we're gonna be using ribbon at the end in, in addition to hold things together. If you want to use wood glue, you can for a stronger hold or super glue would work. Uh, E6000 doesn't from my experience, it soaks in the wood, but super glue is an option as well as wood glue. And that's what you have left when you're all done. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is hit it with some cream color. I like this a little bit better than white. It's not so loud and glaring. I just, I love farmhouse white. I mean, nothing beats it. It is so fresh and pretty for farmhouse decor. But for this particular craft, I wanted these to look vintage. We're making little mini gifts. And in order to make them look kind of warm and comfortable on the eye and vintage, I chose to go with cream. I just thought that would be a little bit easier for the whole look that I'm going for. If you only have white, use white, that's just fine, because you can always dry brush a brown color, I mean really dry brush like a light brown color over it, and that will also give you the illusion of it being cream. So don't stress if you don't have a cream color, that's just fine. So the next color I choose, as you can see, is like a wine red, I guess, it's like a burgundy wine and that forest green from Apple Barrel. I love that forest green. I think it is so beautiful for farmhouse Christmas decor. And now I'm taking the color in Burnt Umber. That's my second favorite color for aging things and making it look old, and just dry brushing it all over the surface on all three of these little presents. So again, this was a Pinterest inspired craft, you guys. I saw bigger versions of this online and I thought, I don't wanna store that. But boy, oh boy, would those make super cute little miniaturized versions on a tiered tray for Christmas when you're decorating it for Christmas. And here you see me cutting off the sparkly edges of that buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree because I didn't think the sparkly edge would go too well with the vintage look, you know, the rustic look. I wanted it to be just plain. And I'm just gonna add garnishes, you'll see me do it. I'm just adding some difference. I, you know, all of this is from the Dollar Tree except for that pine and, well, some that little, like it looks like a bush pine right there on the side, that came from Michael's Craft Store. A few years back, I went back and just bought a bunch of little cute Christmas picks from there when they were on sale and they've lasted me forever. I've just been cutting off little things here and there and adding it to my crafts. So definitely hit the craft stores, you guys, after Christmas when everything is 75% off because it's actually cheaper than the Dollar Tree. And of course you get really high quality stuff and you get a lot more choices. So here I am gluing the black and white, and I'm not gonna say it, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, it's not Buffalo Check when it's black and white. Someone, a seamstress, came on and said, the red and white one is Buffalo Check. When it's black and white, like this, the check, it's called Gingham, the print. So black and white Gingham. That's gonna be hard for me to remember, but there's a little trivia for you today, folks. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, it's always good to learn new stuff. So here is my second favorite, oh my gosh, that lace ribbon from Dollar Tree. I love that, it is so pretty. So I use that for the next present. And I'm using the burlap from the Dollar Tree burlap banner that they sell over in the party section at My Dollar Trees. Now, I don't live by great Dollar Trees. They are really lacking when it comes to Crafter Square stuff. So that is something that I hope most of you can find because it seems to be an all year round everyday item for me are these little burlap banner things. And in a pinch, they make great you know, you can see great garnishes and little embellishments for farmhouse crafts. And there it is. Let me know which one was your favorite. I think these came up so, so cute and I can't wait to display them on my three tier tray.
Hi everyone. For this craft, you're going to need a spare can. I'm using a coffee can, but you can use any can you want. Now, for those of you that have been keeping up with my festive series through fall and now through Christmas, I made this for fall with pumpkin pies, but I'm doing one for Christmas because I happen to store my tea bags in this container. So I thought it would be nice to keep it up with the seasons. And this is a free printout. It's going to be down below in my description box below my video. So you can print it up and cut it out and get it from there. Now I'm starting off painting this container with white. It was primer from Kills, K-I-L-Z. It really worked well on the last one I did in the fall season. The paint stuck on really, really well. And I actually was really skimpy with the Mod Podge when I sealed it. So I was really, you know, I'm really pleased with this paint on shiny surfaces. It's working really good for me lately. And I'm just going to Mod Podge this on. Now I did want to make this look a little more festive. So I went ahead and I added some distressed looking red along the top and the bottom edges there. And I'm using a wet sponge to press the print into the lines. I didn't do that last time and it wasn't really that noticeable. But I, you know, it's funny how you're so critical of yourself. But I just kept focusing on it. So I thought this time I definitely want to get that image down wrinkle free and into those grooves so it looks like it's part of the can so the wet sponge worked really well and then using the lid that came with this coffee can i just went ahead and traced three circles with good thick cardboard in that shape of the lid for measurement and now I'm going to glue some of the Dollar Tree towering wooden blocks in between this. Now I did this originally for height and for weight but to be honest when I made the lid before I didn't do this I just used if memory serves me correctly I used four pieces of cardboard and glued them all together. Now haste makes waste you guys because I was trying to save some time by not having to cut out two or three more circles of cardboard and now I'm covering the edges with tape because there's that air gap in between and it makes it really fragile and more difficult to work with. Now it came up beautiful, it's sturdy when everything's said and done and I love my lid but I feel a responsibility to tell you that it would be easier and faster if you just cut out two or three more circles depending on how thick you know how high the height of the lid how high you want yours to be it would be easier just to do cardboard and skip the towering block altogether it wasn't necessary so now I want my top to be wood I really want to go for this wood paneling shiplap pa you know palette kind of look and I'm using the jumbo craft sticks from Walmart and then the two ones on the end are medium craft sticks from the Dollar Tree because they were the other ones were way too big and I kind of like it when they're different width too I think that looks more rustic and more authentic so I'm using spackling for those of you that watch my videos you've seen me do this trick before spackling is amazing in the UK and someone came on from Belgium as well to tell me it's called polyphila so in the UK it's polyphila also in Belgium I guess so I'm guessing around Europe it's called polyphila that's what I'm using here sorry I don't know the name of it in every country but you use it to fill in nail holes on your wall so whatever you guys use for that purpose that's what I'm using for this craft and I did the edges smooth it out let it dry overnight and now I'm just sanding the wood and the sides to smooth it down just a little bit and I decide I want a green lid I just want to jazz this up a little bit more make it a little more festive for Christmas so I'm going with a light green here you can use any green that you want I'm gonna go with two color greens I'm gonna use a light one so I can distress the wood on the top when I, you see me sanding it right here to show a little bit of wood and make it look rustic and farmhouse and then I'm going to add some of that forest green paint later and dry brush it on just to give it a little bit more depth and contrast. And I sealed the entire container with a clear matte varnish spray paint. This time I'm going to use one of those Dollar Tree little wood pieces you get. I actually think it might be birch wood, like little mini birch woods there for the lid because I want to imitate the feeling of a Christmas tree trunk and the greenery of the Christmas tree itself. Last time I used a wine cork I cut it at an angle to imitate a pumpkin stem but we're doing it up for Christmas now and I'm just shading around the lid, dry brushing around the edge and that's it. It came up so cute. I love this craft.
So I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little short on Christmas accent pillows. So I thought I'd make one because when you price them at the store, they're just too much money. I cannot stand buying pillows. I have like a, oh, I, 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 I get so frustrated when I see the prices because they're usually so expensive even at Walmart or cheaper places. And I end up buying cheap Walmart bed pillows. So the indoor ones, I usually just buy a pillow from Walmart. I've been doing that since the 1990s. The pillows in the center aisle in those big bins, they're always so cheap and they're often cheaper than the polyfiber fill. So after I cut out a pattern for my Christmas tree and I changed it up a little bit, I just used, you know, the Dollar Tree little wooden ornament for a rough sketch and then I chose some Christmassy plaid material and now I'm just going to use hot glue and glue the little I think it's like a washing cloth from the Dollar Tree for cars but it works beautiful for um, it, you know it's really big when you unfold it and it works perfect for an accent pillow for Christmas and of course it's got that really warm cozy fuzzy look like snow so I just I saw it and I thought ooh, that would make a good pillow I've been wanting to do this since summer now I will tell you, I was skeptical about using a hot glue gun. I know there's hot glue for a cloth and you know, it's washable. And I thought, oh, what if this comes apart? Uh, well, anyway, you guys, at some point during this craft, I changed my mind and I started to attempt to pull the Christmas trees off. I were, and then I thought, okay, all right, whatever. I'll just undo the edges of the white fiber cloth. Anyway, nothing would budge no matter how hard I pulled, I would have damaged the cloth and on both counts, the plaid and the little fuzzy white wash, whatever that is, that cloth. So you're definitely committed when you use hot glue. You will not have to worry about anything falling off. I don't know if it washes, but I suspect if you wash it in cold water, I mean, if you can't pull it apart when you're pulling that hard, I suspect you could wash this in cold water and it would work just fine. So I decide to take a brown permanent marker and just edge the edges a little bit. Now, word of warning, if you want to overstuff your pillow, I recommend you wait to do any kind of edge with a marking pen after you stuff your pillow and that way it won't spread apart and move away from the edge there. But I love this pillow, it came up so cute. <music> For this craft, I'm using the Dollar Tree oversized ornament wall, little cheap signs they have there. And I'm gonna take the metal piece off. Now this is a craft you can definitely do using cardboard or wood. You can just print up a pattern of a large ornament or just an ornament and then enlarge it on a printer program and go from there. Check out my video on how to make a fake farmhouse wood sign because you can dupe anything with that method. Now, word, of another word of warning here. I guess you, you learn when you craft. I scored this because I've seen you know, somebody, I don't remember who it was now, said, oh, if you score it and you can break this really easy, I broke it and it almost ruined the piece. And so I recommend if you're going to do this to cut all the way through, don't break it because it takes off chunks of the cardboard underneath. You can see what I'm doing here. I want to turn this ornament into a palette type sign and I just put two painter sticks on the back, slap some white paint on it, and voila, we have a very rustic farmhouse Christmas decor piece now to work with. And I'm using pewter gray and apple barrel paint here just to do some dry brushing and then I'm going to edge it with a bit of black to make it look nice and old and weathered. So just taking some of the super glue here, I'm going to glue on one of those metal Dollar Tree signs and I chose the word peace and used a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. I do end up moving it. It's a, a little bit of an angle there. I slide it down, you know, so it doesn't, you can see it now, I fixed it. 
and I'm going to go ahead and glue the metal piece that I took off the top back onto the top. Now for my home decor, I would have stopped right here and maybe tied some of those rusty bells on the top or some distressed little round bobbles, some Christmas bobbles, little ornaments and called it a day because my decor is rustic, but this is a gift for someone and their home is a little more traditional Christmas decor. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a bow. This is the Buffalo Check red and white ribbon from Dollar Tree, which I never find and got really lucky this year and found it. And I also found this little, I love this, it comes in red and black polka dotted ribbon that you can also get at the Dollar Tree. It's burlap, it just looks perfect for farmhouse or Christmas even, I just love this look. And I got some little white pom poms from the Dollar Tree and I just thought that would be so cute. Again, I was looking at her decor in her home and trying to match the things that she already has up. So this goes really, really well for her. I also used a little bit of that burlap from the banner you can get in the birthday aisle there. It's available all year round in my Dollar Tree just for a little bit of a rustic. It's right there, you can see it for a little extra touch there. And I'm tacking the ribbons down to keep them away from the words so they don't cover the words. I always tack them so they look like they're flowing with waves, but I love this and so does she and it was a lot of fun to make. I hope you guys get to try it. For this craft, I'm going to use a smaller stovetop cover, some of those little makarachi beads, <laughs> and one a little terracotta plant pot. Now that wasn't from the Dollar Tree, but I have seen both large and small terracotta pots come out during summer, so you can keep your eye open or you can substitute that with something else. It doesn't have to be terracotta, it could be a plastic one, but just a little bottom for this. And we start by spray painting those two items white, I did spray paint the beads, but I didn't have great luck with coverage and I didn't want to waste any more paint, so I brought them in and you saw me painting them white the rest of the way as well. Now to make sure this bottom sticks to the top, I'm adding some masking tape. And that's always worked for me. If you guys want to try and do it with a super glue, you can. I tend to make you know, I craft a lot for fun, it's a hobby. So a lot of things get given away after a while because I want to make new things and I have to make room for them. So this doesn't really have to last more than maybe two or three years and then I might be moving it on or maybe even taking it apart to use it for another craft that's on trend that I want. Some things I keep forever, but like all crafters, you know, if you're crafting like 300 crafts a year, you realistically do not have room for all of that in your house. So. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to get creative. You give it away. You I, I don't really sell anything. But anyway, you can see what I did there. I took some hot glue, stuck those beads on. And again, I was shocked. They stuck really hard on there because when I went to try and remove them, I realized I really couldn't. And that was just on the paint. So I did spray it with the Rust-Oleum White Primer Matte. This is my to-go-to paint that I use for spray paint. I never buy regular paint in black or white. It is always primer and it's actually called flat. It's flat is matte, <laughs> that rhymes. But essentially it's just a paint that guarantees a little bit more adhesion than just regular spray paint. So it gives you a lot more options as far as what surfaces you want to cover with spray paint. Now, if you watched my Halloween video, I showed you how to take a plastic tray, well it could be any material, but I showed you how to do really realistic faux wood grain using four colors. And it occurred to me after that video that so far I've shown you how to do wood grain if you paint white first and then use that water-based acrylic stain. I also mentioned wax. Some I've seen creators do the antique wax that also works beautiful for grain. But it occurred to me, some of you 
may not have that much arsenal in your craft supplies and it would be nice to show you how you can also make wood grain using just one color. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to be using Territorial Beige from Apple Barrel Paint and as you saw I did one coat of super dry brushing. That was it. Now I'm taking a baby wipe and I am touching it feather light, like barely, barely touch it. Just go over it until you see it kind of smearing and staining your surfaces, just like you see here on the camera. And I'm going to add a little bit more on the bottom and because it's slimy, I notice it just kind of does a beautiful smear on its own with my paintbrush. So first you do one dry brush, then you do the wipe where you just smear it a bit. Then you go over it with another dry brush, then you do the wipe and then a final dry brush and this is what you end up with you guys and it's a beautiful color of faux wood it's very three-dimensional even though you only used one color now the trick is to make sure though that that paint you put on is dry when you're dry brushing don't put it on too wet it needs to be dry and your feather light with the wipe over it but look at this i made this for my farmhouse hutch it's in there right now it's holding a christmas tray and it is so beautiful For this craft, you're going to need one of the Dollar Tree wooden stars, some little Dollar Tree bells, and some scrap wood. If you don't have the scrap wood, just use some of those towering blocks, some Dollar Tree snowflakes, some Dollar Tree pine, and some Dollar Tree pine cones. Now, for those of you that watched my videos, you've seen this a lot. I take the Dollar Tree pine and trim it down for smaller crafts. It makes it look a little more expensive and of course it fits the smaller craft a little bit better. And I'm just going to remove one of those snowflakes there. And I'm starting off by using burnt umber and I'm going to edge this star to make it pop and you know look a little more rustic and just show it off a little bit more. So this star I think is carried all year round in a crafting section. If you can't find it, you can use a Christmas ornament. If you can find a Christmas ornament, just do that. And that's another thing, you guys. I have people come and ask me, oh, are you going to make three-tier tray decor? And of course, I have made some, and I'm going to scoot it in there anytime I can. And this craft can be used for a three-tier tray as well. But I have to say, Christmas is the season for three-tier tray decor. You cannot beat some of the you know cheap ornaments that you will find and they are perfect for three-tier trays like the little metal sleigh ornaments at the dollar tree and i found a little wooden um, nutcracker at target on 90 percent off last year when i went january 7th after christmas and all these kind of things are on my three-tier tray and i can't make things that detailed and that intricate so please check out the dollar tree christmas ornaments they have cute reindeers they have those oversized christmas bells that can be rusted up they have that metal sleigh so many cute things you guys for three-tier tray decor so take advantage of that along with the things i'm showing you to craft as well so you saw what i did here i'm just hot gluing the little star on top of the surface of this block here now this block was actually a piece of what I was going to throw away. I tested out a watered down burnt umber paint on there to see if it was going to make a nice stain. And because my home is in the farmhouse theme, any kind of scrap wood like this that's imperfect is perfect for my home decor. I'm just 
taking the pine there that you can see I frosted it up with some white paint I just painted white paint on there to make it look nice and flocked and now I'm using the pit berries and I'm going to show you how I do this I cut up right to the very bottom of it so that they're like little stems and then I'm going to grab them in a group and I twist really hard and twist them all together to make sure they stay together when I glue them down. And go ahead and use some pliers or whatever you need to make sure those wires are twisted together. But that's it. This is a super easy craft. You just take your favorite rustic ornament, decorate it with more rustic decor, and voila, you have a super high-end, beautiful rustic decor piece for Christmas. For this craft, you're going to need one of these little Dollar Tree LED lanterns and one of their candlesticks. Now, I chose to do the first coat of paint with my DIY Holly Humble chalk paint, and I chose it because I'm covering black and I wanted really good opaque coverage, and this is outstanding for that. I mean, it covers everything on one coat, but I was also planning on distressing it and kind of making it a little old because my decor is very rustic. If you're someone that doesn't want that chippy look or that rustic look, I recommend that you use a primer for this because especially the little lantern, it was really, really shiny. I don't even think Waverly chalk paint would stick really well. I mean, you could use Waverly and then just seal it up with some Mod Podge or a poly acrylic clear spray of some kind, but I'm just letting you know that the surfaces definitely wanted to let go of the paint. Now next, I'm going to go ahead and use this water-based stain. I absolutely love it from Amazon. Here it is. It basically imitates wood grain. I mean, you can paint anything white. And when you brush this on the top, you have, voila, wood. It looks fantastic. I use it all the time. If you've been watching my videos, you've seen it before. And I, the one thing I really love about it is that it's water-based so that means you can wash it off your brush really well let your brush dry it's just like acrylic paint and it's down below in my description box if you're interested in the one that i used and when we're all done this is what we end up with it came up super cute and now i am using the dollar tree pine and trimming it down to make it look a little bit more expensive and also because the lantern is very petite and it would overpower the lantern you can leave it bigger if you want but i just felt like it might overpower the lantern speaking of a tiny lantern um, I am going to tear off that greenery after Christmas, touch up the paint, and keep this on my three-tiered tray all year round because I think it's absolutely adorable. And for those of you that have been asking me for three-tier tray decor, this qualifies. It's perfect and super easy to make. And I'm just adding greenery here and some festive berries so that it looks good for Christmas. And because I don't want the paint to get damaged anywhere else, you know, I didn't have a choice with greenery. I had to glue that on, but I'm gonna go ahead and tie on the little buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree, float some fire over the edges so that it does not fray, and we end up with a super, super cute little farmhouse lantern.
this craft you're going to need one of those cheap plastic trays you can find them at any discount store this is from the Dollar Tree and a gift bag of your choosing or an image from online I love this gift bag and I went ahead and took it outside and gave it a coat of this metallic spray in aluminum the colors aluminum you can use any metallic spray of your choice but it's just to give the tray the initial metal look so I went ahead and I glued the image down and then to kind of soften up the edges you know the border on this I'm gonna give it a nice little sponging of like snow around the edges because I wanted it to kind of look like it was sitting in winter snow I just love that look and now I'm taking the same makeup sponge and I'm using the color pewter gray from apple barrel paint and I'm going to go ahead and sponge that all over this tray as well and that's what you end up with and then take your totally tweaked brush I love tweaked brushes this is what I flocked with on my last video last week I love this I just dipped it in some black paint and that's going to give me my little amoeba shapes everywhere for the black paint and now I'm taking some metallic paint that that you can use in any brand again it's like an iridescent silver and you're going to want to cover the entire thing with the iridescent silver and that will give you a nice galvanized finish right there you can see it comes up really really nice this is a fast way to get a galvanized look when you just kind of want to throw out some quick holiday decor and you're crafting a lot this works fine and now I'm taking a sponge and I'm taking some black paint and I'm just gonna go around the edges and chip this baby up a little bit because my decor is very rustic and distressed so everything kind of has to look old so you're going to see me take the sponge and also add some chips you just kind of blot it on there like that and it's not hard to do you guys this actually is amazingly easy once you get the feel for it and now I'm just going to go ahead and add some faux rust using the color Nutmeg from Apple Barrel Paint again. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm just painting around the outer edges of each of the chips. And I'm just picking random ones. You know, you kind of do this one by eye. And you use your finger, you smear it a little bit. And it creates a really beautiful illusion of rusting on the metal. So I step back look at this I decide that it needs a little bit more chipping on the actual you know center part of the tray I didn't feel like I had enough it looked like it was brand new in the middle and just old around the edges so I'm doing that now I'm just adding some little scrapes and chips in the center and some more rusting and that's it it's a lot of fun to do this I love doing galvanized aged metal that's one of my favorite techniques to do and it's this is a really easy way to do it so here I'm taking the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to go around and glue it in that little seam there on the tray and give it a nice border. Now for those of you that don't have any nautical rope, another option is just to take black paint, use the edge of your sponge and just tap really tiny like razor thin lines of black paint around that crease there and add a little bit of rust here and there as well and that would have been really pretty I just wanted it there's something about that nautical rope that really ups the ante to make it look farmhouse and rustic I don't know it would have looked good either way so last step it's a Mod Podge in matte the matte has a little bit of a sheen and I think it works really well to kind of imitate metal the gloss is probably a little too shiny i'd save that when you want to do the shinier metals like enamel or something but for this kind of metal a galvanized one i'm sure a lot of you have seen it in real life it's not super shiny but i love this i plan on keeping it and storing it so here it is you guys For this craft you're going to need one of these Dollar Tree tinsel trees and I end up cutting off the tinsel and removing it. Today I'm actually making a friend of mine a craft. She requested I make her something, bless her heart, and her home is modern farmhouse and neutral and very minimalist. She doesn't like a lot of clutter. Everything has very clean edges 
And so this is what I come up with. And honestly, I was looking at this when it was done. It came up so cute and it's so simple. It's great for people who are short on time, who want a little accent piece that looks, you know, modern or even boho farmhouse. Definitely. You could definitely, this would be great for that. But you know what? Come to think of it. I think this would even fit if you're doing that even rarer decor style of the nautical farmhouse. This would be perfect for that as well. And she ended up loving it. But anyway, uh, this is what I come up with. I take the nautical boat from the Dollar Tree. Well, you'll see what I do. And here's a nice little trick that I do whenever I do these wrap crafts. I call them wrap crafts, like W-R-A-P. <laughs> Get a lot of wrap in there. I cut the very end at an angle so that it's really easy to glue down and camouflage and it blends in really, well, it blends in better than if you just cut it straight across. And I'm just going to go ahead and seal up the bottom here and get it all to kind of blend in and finish off the edges. And that's what we have so far. So this tree needs a topper, of course, and I agonized over this. I stared at it and stared at it. I thought, bells, no, no. I almost, I almost did a pom-pom, but I thought, I'm not sure she'll like that. So I opted to do the traditional star and just put it in a neutral color. This is also from the Dollar Tree. It's their little Christmas confetti. They're great for uh, DIYs and Christmas decor. And I just, end up needing to put a little bit of a filler at the top to get the star to stick really nicely. And what I decide to do is use a little bit of leftover mop thread because it's really small and see how I'm kind of squishing it together. I'm making a point and that tucks up underneath the bottom of the star perfectly and holds it in place. This is such a cute, simple craft, and if you're into neutrals for Christmas decor, I really couldn't recommend this anymore. It would be great on a bedside table, in an entry table, just super, super classy looking. For this next craft, you're going to need a metal bowl or some kind of bowl. It doesn't have to be metal and a tall jar of some kind. This is an old jar that I bought back in the 90s and I'm sure it was giving off all of that toxic plastic stuff because I know after that they made plastic safer and I bought it back in the day. So I decided to use it for this craft and I totally couldn't think. I know you can put a bowl upside down on it, the same bowl, but the Dollar Tree isn't carrying those dog bowls anymore. I've been looking for like three months because I've been planning this and I finally opted to go with this like fake Cool Whip container and it ended up working really, really well. It just came up so authentic looking. Well, you'll see when it's all done. And I'm using some of that super glue gel. It's a, um, I forget what it's called, but any super glue or E6000 will work. Any kind of strong glue that holds it all together will work. And some other suggestions to you guys for the bottom container. I was in a Smart and Final the other day and they had a big best food mayonnaise container that would work. My son drinks protein powder drinks and he has those big containers in that, you know, size and um, shape when he's done that would work so just keep your eye out for uh, big containers that look like a milk jug and if it's a product you use go ahead and buy it because it's a great free DIY so also something I agonized about for the last five months is the handles I had seen many different things and I just never really liked the way it looked it just didn't quite look right I even bought a little rubber 
basket from the Dollar Tree thinking I was going to use those handles and then I thought no they're not going to hold the crease when I bend it like I'm doing right now that's so important that that crease stays in place and it looks legit so shockingly and I do mean I was shocked these are the best handles yet that I've ever done for one of these I mean look at that they totally look like metal it's just like unbelievably th the simplest thing around the house I couldn't believe it after five months of trying to figure out what I wanted to use for handles of all things you know what I mean you could use a margarine container or any kind of plastic container like that but that plastic looks really good when you're done so now I decide to do I've always wanted to do this a white enamel milk can little farmhouse milk can for Christmas so I'm just taking my black paint now on my little sponge there from the Dollar Tree little sponge brush and I'm gonna go about doing that just getting that look you edge it a little bit chip it up a little bit and it comes up beautiful some of you may have noticed that the jar was like a galvanized metal and that was because originally when I started this craft I was going to do a galvanized one and I stopped and thought no holly you've always wanted a white milk can just do it white so i took it back outside and i sprayed it white you know that's something i do sometimes i'll change my mind in the middle of crafting i'll be making it and i'll think it is just not hitting the mark so <laughs> you guys that's totally okay i actually think that's part of the fun of crafting you just have fun with it change it if you want to change it up as much as you want until you're happy with it so once you get that little chippy enamel look where you want it to be and it looks good i am just taking some regular old school glue and i'm going to go ahead and glue this image down now this is a free printable it will be down below in my description box and i also decide to make one i made this one this will also be down in my description box but i have a thing for milk cans you guys i love them i don't know why but i think they are so awesome for farmhouse decor so i do decide to make this reversible so i can keep it up all year round next i'm taking some clear gloss little sealer here because we want this shiny and it comes up awesome If you enjoyed today's video and had fun, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, share my video, subscribe. It really does help YouTube notice my channel and it helps my channel grow. Thank you all so much. And of course, until the next video, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.